Hey, hey, Jelly Toast here with Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, Woo! also known as Daigakuten Zaiban in Japanese. I've been waiting for this game for forever. I even got the Japanese version of the uh, 3DS games and I got the English patch for it uh, just so I was could be able to stream it, but um, uh, my video capture didn't work with my old 3DS and so I would try to do something with the new 3DS but then I needed to get totally new software and things were not just matching up and then they announced that they're releasing it in English. So here it is on the Switch and I'm so excited to play this. Uh, let's get this going. It's so weird playing with a Switch controller now. Uh, new game. Because I'm so used to PlayStation controller. But let's do this. I have... I'm playing this with Japanese voices because I am a weeb. Also, I like the Japanese voice actor for um, one of the characters. Everything looks so pretty. I'm wondering how the screen's going to work. Uh. Uh? Oh no. Oh, I think that's me. そして今、そんな時代を舞台に一つの物語が幕を開く。That's me. Oh no. Uh, I... Bienvenue à la Carnival, the adventure of the Great Departure. Twenty second, November, eight forty three a.m. Supreme Court of Judicature? Defendants Antechamber 5. Still can't believe it. Still can't believe this is happening. How can it be that just beyond the doors to this quiet little chamber is the highest court in Japan waiting to decide my fate? But yeah, how are the screens gonna work? Because it was made for 3DS, so it was like the top and bottom screen. But this is the Switch, it only has one screen. What? Oh, no, nothing. Save your glares, murderer. Sorry. Isn't there any way to make this text faster? Um, hold up a second. Options. Um, audio, gameplay. Text skip off. No, I don't want to turn text skip on. Reader. This does it automatically for- okay. Never mind. The text is just gonna be that slow. My name is Ryunosuke Naruhuro. I'm a second year student at the Imperial Yume University. Three days ago, I somehow found myself in the middle of a horrifying incident. And now, here I am, awaiting my trial. That's enough! <gasps> yes! This guy! Ooh, he's not obliged to listen to such abuse, officer. And who are you? I'm this man's lawyer. I'll be defending him today. <gasps> He's my lawyer! Lawyer? Yes, and until the judge has given his verdict on the case, no one has a right to treat him as a criminal. So you will hold your tongue. <laughs> Technicalities. Look at you, you haven't even graduated yet. And yet, I still seem to know better than you how a court officer should behave. Right, Ryudasuke? Oh! Y yes, of course. Sorry. What are you apologizing to me for? Oh, I... No, I suppose that wasn't my fault. But really, Kazuma, I never meant to drag you into this. I'm sorry. Ha 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 ha! There you go again, apologizing. Just like always. Uh... Though I must say, you've been all over the newspapers these past few days. A Yume University professor murdered in cold blood by students. But obviously, you didn't actually do it, did you? Of course not! You have to believe me, I didn't do it! I... I could never murder someone. Then there's nothing to worry about. Straighten yourself up. Hold your head high. You mean... I believe you. I know you're innocent, Ryosuke. 
Kazuma Asoki, my best friend. Also in his second year at Yume University. But he's far more clever than I. A star student, in fact. He's even a qualified lawyer. Impressive, considering he's still an undergraduate. It's not that impressive. <laughs> the very concept of lawyers is only a few years old. Here in Japan, anyway. My qualifications don't mean much. Yet. You said exactly the same thing three days ago. But I'm proud to have a friend like you, Kazuma. Truly. Three days ago. Yes, that's when all this started. Congratulations, Kazuma. Oh, that's me. It looks like you're going to get to study abroad at last. I know. I've been forever dreaming of this day. Finally, those government elites have acknowledged my academic achievements and successes in court. So you'll be representing Japan as you immerse yourself in the most sophisticated legal system in the world. <laughs> I'm really happy for you, and proud, as your friend. There's not a soul in the university who doesn't know Kazuma's name. He's a living legend. It's like there's some mysterious aura billowing uh, around his temple. Because <laughs> the wind's always blowing his headband. I want to bring about change in our own legal system. That's why I have to cross the ocean to see the real thing with my own eyes. The heart of the British Empire. I wish I could see it too. Then come with me. We'd have a wild time tearing up the streets of Her Majesty's City of London together. If only it were that simple. Oh dear, look at the time. I'd better be going. Alright, I'll see you later. I think I'll stay and enjoy this place a, a while longer. Good idea. After all, it's not every day you get to visit a high-class western western <laughs> western restaurant like this. See you in English class tomorrow then, partner. Aibo! <laughs> it was a straight after that. That's when it happens. Asogi, may I have a word? <gasps> her! I forgot her name. Professor, I didn't know you were coming. My voice can't go any deeper. Well, this case has personal significance to me. <laughs> but never mind that for now, Asogi. You should go immediately to the judge's chambers. To his excellency's chambers? Why? He was looking for you before. You are advocating for the defense in this trial with sudden decision. It seems there may be some confusion about procedures today as a result. Who is this man? I feel as though I've seen him around at university before. I'm adding words to the words. Ooh! Maka! Hi! Thanks for the 17 months sub! How you doing? I see. I'll go at once then. I shall accompany you. All right then, Dunosuke. I'll see you in the courtroom. Yes, thanks, Kazuma. She's so cute. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> oh, this is awkward. If I may. Yes, sorry. You must be the defendant, Dunosuke Naruhodo, I believe. Yes, yes, that's right. I'm sleepy, how are you? I am excited to play this game. I'm feeling a little sleepy because I worked a lot today too. Also, let me know if my audio is too loud. Oops, I think I'm peaking a little. Lowered that a bit. My name is Eugene Mikotoba. I'm a professor of forensic medicine at Yume University. Ah, Professor Mikotoba. I heard that name from Kazuma before. As I recall, he's been pushing to get the government to agree to Kazuma studying abroad. Asuki has told me about you. You and he are best friends, I understand. Hm? Your audio sounds fine to me? Nice. As such, I feel you should know. Know what? Well, as you've no doubt heard, Asuki has been granted permission to go and study in Great Britain. However, if he should fail to defend you in today's trial, I'm afraid that that permission will be revoked and never granted again. <gasps> what?! <laughs> Ah, uh, as I suspected. You were unaware of this. I had a feeling Asuki may have chosen not to tell you. Then why are you telling me? He's agreed to defend me, knowing that if he fails, his dreams will be shattered? But I don't understand! Why would the government do such a thing? The administration has to choose from a large number of applicants for overseas study. It's very difficult to persuade them to grant permission, even in the most favorable of circumstances. I don't believe it. But I... 
I didn't do it. I swear it. I'm not a murderer. I'm sure that's true. Nevertheless, I can assure you that proving your innocence will be no easy task. You see, there are certain peculiarities about today's trial. Sorry? What do you mean? He'll soon understand once proceedings get underway. But, then what should I do? Well, naturally I'm not going to suggest doing anything that could lead to a conviction. Right, so... As soon as the trial starts, the judge will pose a certain question to the defense. When that happens, you must answer before anyone else. You must say, I do. I do? But what will the question be? Surely not... Do you accept the accusations brought before you? Of course not. Defend it! Court is about to begin. Proceed to the courtroom at once. Ugh. It would seem our surreptitious discussions are to be cut short. So allow me to summarize. Kazuma Asogi must not be the defense lawyer in this trial. Of course, as the defendant, the final decision is yours. What are you waiting for? Do you want to be found guilty for failing to appear? Get moving! There's no point in anyone advocating for the likes of you anyway. Just wait until I prove my innocence, dude. Then you'll be sorry. This is it. If the trial goes badly, Cosmo's dreams of studying abroad are over, and what's more, I'll be found guilty of murder. And so, with absolute no idea of what lay ahead, I embarked on that unforgettable trial. Let's do this. My one and only chance of proving my innocence. The trial that would decide my destiny. I turned flashes off. Why is it flashing? They had an option. To turn it off. 22nd November 9 a.m. Supreme Court of Judicature. Judicature? Courtroom 2. Whatever. I don't know how to read that word. <laughs> so this is a courtroom. The Supreme Court of Judicature. No court in the land has more power. I don't much like the looks of those people sitting in the public gallery. Lots of military and other uniforms in there. The powers that be have demanded that this be a secret trial. A secret trial? A trial that's close to the ordinary members of the public. Only military and government officials may attend. What? But why? It'll become clear in time. But for now. You need to concentrate, Ryunosuke. It's about to begin. How does Kazuma's hair work? Oh! <laughs> Oh, look at this judge! The court will now hear the trial of Ryunosuke Naruhoto. The prosecution is ready, your excellency. As is the defense. He looks so freaking regal. Before we begin, there is one point of order I would like to confirm. Yesterday evening, the defense made a last minute request for a change of advocate. That's correct, your excellency. I made the request myself. Normal procedure is for the defendant's advocacy to be decided two days prior to trial. As this is an unusual circumstance, I am obliged to ask for final confirmation now. Who advocates for the defendant in this trial? This is it. This must be the question. Who's going to defend me? That's the question Professor meant. But then, if I say I do... If I say I do... I need to answer quickly. What should I do? What's so bad about it? Your Excellency, no confirmation is needed. As I'm standing here beside the defendant, I hope it's clear who will advocate for his defense. <laughs> what is the meaning of this unruly outburst? I... I would like to inform the court that... that... I... Ryunosuke Naruhodo will be defending myself? You'll be... What?! What are you playing at, Ryunosuke? Professor Mikotoba told me everything, just now, before the trial. He did what? He said that your dreams of studying abroad would be dashed if you were to lose. How 
How sad. It means you don't have the faith in me. You think I won't be able to get you off? No, it's not that, really. It's just that... Well, on the off chance that things don't go well for me, I couldn't bear to be the reason that you... Yes. I knew that's how you'd feel, which is exactly why I decided not to tell you. <laughs> Professor Mikotoba shouldn't have stuck his nose in. Oh, should I... should I not have said I do? No, I want... I want Kazuma with me. Very well. The court hereby recognizes the defendant's desire to advocate for himself in today's trial. Well, well. Does the accused admit to fit already? Renouncing his own counsel, really. Yiki Hari! Yiki <laughs> Make no mistake, counsel. This merely shows that the defendant's innocence is so apparent he's confident he can speak for himself. Isn't that so, Naruhodo-san? Where's that wind coming from on his headband? It's just perpetually blowing. He's a magical boy. Also, hey, Malice, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Monday. Hmm? Oh, yes, exactly. Exactly what I wasn't thinking. I'm not confident at all. <laughs> in fact, my mind's a complete blank. I realize you're in charge now, but still, try not to look so bewildered. Hmm. Well, for a mere university student to be brought before the Supreme Court. You must have a perpetrated... Wait. You must have perpetrated a most heinous crime indeed. What's up with his eyes? Shifty eyes? Who? Do you know Ske? As you are no doubt aware, this is the Supreme Court of Judicature of Japan. Accordingly, the very highest standards of conduct are expected of all present. Do I make myself clear, Defendant Naruhodo? Yes, Your Excellency. It is therefore my duty to assess your competence for the task you have undertaken. My competence? What does that mean? He's questioning your ability to do the job. Well, he can't be questioning it more than I am. So, let's start with the very simplest of questions. Oh, um, yes. Kindly state before the court the name of the victim in this case. Well, that's easy enough. I've heard his name more times than I care to remember. But, wait. Ugh, I'm so nervous, I can't even remember that! What was it again? You know Skit. Let me guess. Your mind's gone blank? Um, you know me so well. All the relevant information for this case can be found in the court record. But, I can't even find that. It's simple. You can access the court record with a press of R. If you ever find you've forgotten something, just consult that. It's all in there. I just have to press R for the court record. Alright, there's no time to lose. This is the list of evidence you've collected. Now try switching to people instead with R. <gasps> oh, Cosmos 23. Okay. You'll find details about the victim in here. When you're done, just press B to go back. Yuji Mikotopo is 42. Medical school professor at the Imperial Yume uh, University. He's an authority in forensic medicine and Cosmos mentor. Takitsuji Aochi, the lead prosecutor of his case, who would appear to have little love for the changes the cultural reformation has brought about, and John H. Wilson, the victim of this case, he was visiting professor of medicine at Yume University from the British Empire. Is this supposed to be Watson? <laughs> like Sherlock and, um, Watson? Yeah, cause it's supposed to be John Watson. Okay, so Kazuma, second year at the Imperial Yume University, he's my best friend and despite being a student, a qualified defense lawyer as well. Okay. Wilson. So remember, everything to do with the current case can be found in the court record. Monday again? Wait. Today is Tuesday. I am so sorry about that. Happy Tuesday. Now you better not keep his excellency waiting any longer. Go on. Find the victim in the people section of the court record, then press X to present. Try it now. I almost pressed the wrong button because I'm so used to PlayStation controls. The victim's name was Dr. John H. Wilson. <laughs> well, at least you can remember the name of an esteemed member of your own university. Watson died? Yeah, uh, someone died in the beginning of this game and apparently it's Watson. Maybe that's how Sherlock Holmes comes into play because he's like, you killed my partner! Dr. Wilson was a vis visiting professor from England, invited to Yume University three years ago. 
Indeed, which is the reason why this case has such a pr profound implications. The British Empire is at present our country's most valuable foreign ally. And as most of you will be aware, we have just signed a new treaty together after lengthy negotiations. There can't be anyone who hasn't heard of the Anglo-Japanese Treaty of Friendship and Navigation. What? And yet, despite these delicate circumstances, the blood of an Englishman has been spilt on our soil. You two are both undergraduates at the Imperial Yubei University, are you not? Murdering a professor from the very institution that provides your education. Have you no honor? Ugh, but I didn't do it. Hey Regal, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Tuesday! The case is coming under great scrutiny from our allies on the other side of the world. The court, therefore, wishes for a speedy resolution to this matter. Hmm. In other words, our feeble government is scared of upsetting England's policymakers. And you're a convenient and expendable scapegoat to blame for this crime. That's why this trial has unusual peculiarities, is it? Exactly. Our government needs to convict someone as quickly as possible. All because the victim was an Englishman. Yes, Dr. Wilson was an Englishman. You totally missed a free 90k MGP last night? Wait, it reset it last night? I thought it was resetting today. So I didn't do it yet. But nationalities and treaties won't make any difference for me here. The fact is, I was there at the scene of the crime. Oh dear, look at the time. I better be going. Alright, I'll see you later. I think I'll stay and enjoy this place a little longer. Good idea. After all, it's not every day you get to visit a high-class western restaurant like this. See you in English class tomorrow, partner. It resets every Tuesday? Oh, I thought... Oh, that makes sense. Tuesday morning at 2 a.m. Oh, I'm dumb. The British Empire. Wow, it's incredible to think. Wait. I've seen that man at university. I'm sure he's a visiting professor from Great Britain. I don't know his name, but still, I should go and say hello. So I went over to the professor's table. and introduce myself to Dr. Wilson. Now then, let me pose my next question to you, Defendant Naruhoro. Yes, Your Excellency. How did this professor of medicine, Dr. John H. Wilson, lose his life? State before the court the cause of death. The cause of death? Well, obviously, that was... Um... Yunosuke. Remember that in court, every assertion must be backed up by evidence. By evidence? But how? Find the piece of evidence that shows the professor's cause of death and select present. Do it now! University collar pin. Proof that I'm a student at the Imperial Yume University. I always wear on the collar of my uniform jacket. Post-mortem report. Death occurred a little after 2 p.m. and was caused by loss of blood from gunshot to the chest. The bullet did not pass through the victim's body. Hi! Hi! Um, well... <laughs> That's such cute animation! According to this document, the victim suffered a hemorrhagic death due to gunshot trauma. Can to read you, imbecile? That's the post-mortem report, I take it? Sorry, yes, that's right. The, um, post-mortem report. In the West, a doctor dissects corpses to identify the cause of death in an autopsy. But here in Japan, a police officer merely inspects the body and draws conclusions that way. Oh, I see. As long as I'm not going to be tested on any of this later. This is a so-called photographic print of the scene of the crime. You can clearly discern scorch marks around the bullet hole produced by the powder explosion. In other words, we should assume that the victim was shot at close range. Thank you, Counsel. The court will accept this modern scientific evidence into the record. The photographic print of the victim has been entered into the court record. Um, okay. I think the stake in the back is gonna be important. For some reason. So that's a photographic print. Well, that is something I've never seen before. It's clearly superior to a drawing. The detail is incredible. Very well. I am satisfied with your answers. Let us start the trial. Certainly, Your Excellency.
So, without further ado, in order to better apprise the court with the facts of the case, the prosecution hereby calls its first witness, who was there at the scene of the crime when it happened. Ugh. This is it then. Hmm. <laughs> I think I may have worked out what the professor had in mind. The professor? You mean Dr. Mikotoba? Yes, clearly you're the defense lawyer today, not me. But that doesn't mean... Well, I can still act as your assistant. Ah, of course. When he was speaking with me before, he simply said, Kazuma Asogi must not be the defense lawyer in this trial. Hmm, he really has been sticking his oar in, hasn't he? Maybe, but any help you can give me would be greatly appreciated, Kazuma. Well, my first piece of advice is, rein in that crazy look of bewilderment and control the cold sweats. Only if you rein in that crazy headband and control the cold stares first. <laughs> I like his headband. I love the magical wind. Witness, state your name and occupation for the court, please. Of course, my name is Sa- I can't do all these different voices, Oh, My name is Satoru Hosonaga. I am the head waiter at the western-style restaurant called La Carnival. <laughs> I'm sick. Um, are you alright? You seem to be coughing up some, uh... Blood! <laughs> it's a regular occurrence. It really doesn't bother me. Well, it really, really should. <laughs> As everyone knows, the capital's southeastern quarter was developed for foreign visitors some years ago. It has become a very fashionable district now, full of hotels to accommodate overseas guests. This grim crime occurred in one of the district's so-called restaurants, an Occidental Eatery, three days ago. Understood. Hosonaga-san, you will kindly tell the court everything you can about the incident. At once, sir. And no petty interjections from the aspiring lawyer boy, please. Oh, um, perspiring maybe, but aspiring? <laughs> it was just after 2pm on the day in question. We had few diners at the time of day. The lunchtime rush was over and there were only three tables still occupied. That fits with my memory of it too. There was hardly anyone else in the place. <clears throat> it was when I was in the kitchen, putting away crockery and cutlery. A gunshot rang out, so I hurried out to the dining area to see what had happened. It can't be this guy because in the cutscene, he clearly ran out, so... And it was close range, so it can't have been him. I found the victim, an English gentleman slumped in his chair. And standing immediately beside him, gun in hand, was the accused university student. Hi. Hold on, let me just clarify something here. While I did pick up a gun that I found lying on the floor beside the professor, I... I didn't shoot him. I believe I asked you to refrain from petty interjections. The court wishes to listen to the witness's report of what he saw, you amateur. But... The next time you interrupt at an inappropriate time, you will be penalized, Defendant Naruhoro. Don't worry, Yunosuke, you'll have your chance to fight back. For now, we must quietly listen to the witness. Ugh. If I may confirm one point, waiter. Standing beside the victim with a gun in his hand was the same man we see here in court today? No, but Kazuma left. Yes, without question. I see. And apart from the accused, was there anyone else standing beside the victim? If Dunusuke picked up the gun, then maybe it could have been him. No, but the first witness usually isn't the killer. No. There was no one else around that table but the deceased Englishman and the university student. Huh? Wait, what did he just say? There was no one else around that table. What's the matter, Junosuke? That's... that's just not right. When I went over to Dr. Wilson to say hello, there was a woman sitting opposite him at his table. Is she Iris? Or Irene? Really? And that's not something the waiter could have missed. I've been warned about interjecting, but still, what should I do? Wait and see! Let him give his whole testimony. I desperately want to say something, but I was told not to interject. Ryunosuke, if 
your parents tell you to study, you're the kind of man who would diligently get to work, aren't you? I... I suppose I am. i never have gotten into Yume University otherwise. But you can't just always follow the rules of life, you know. If you don't say what you want to say right now, you'll seriously regret it when you're found guilty. Alright, you've scared me. I won't forget that piece of advice in a hurry. And there is something I want to say. I'm just going to shut my eyes and say it. Hi! Wait, I'm allowed to interject? But I thought, what? I thought he didn't give his whole testimony, so what? Just a moment, please. Dr. Whistlin wasn't alone that day. I'm sure of it. There was a lady sitting with him at the same table. Dear me, dear me, what are we going to do with you? With your blatant disregard for court proceedings, I'm beginning to wonder if you're not a fraud. Could it be that the accused, this mere student, is not a real lawyer after all? But I'm sure of what I saw. Hosonaga-san, is there any chance you're mistaken? Perhaps your memory of events is hazy? No. The deceased gentleman came to dine alone. I don't believe it. <clears throat> I actually have a rough plan of the restaurant as it was that day. Please have a look if you'd like to. Let me see. Ah, a sketch of the establishment's layout by, drawn by yourself, I presume. That's right, I'm afraid I used the back of my business card. It was a turbulent situation. However, as you can see, the gentleman in question was seated alone. How can we see? You only marked the chairs around the table. You didn't mark- what? You didn't mark where the other guests were sitting on the other tables. Well, you're clearly a very conscientious waiter. Give me that card as evidence. Let me examine it. Thank you, sir. The court will take this plan and add it to the court record as evidence. Oh, um, well... Is there a problem? Hand the plan to the court officer at once. Um, of course. Here you are. What was that about? He's been completely calm and collected until now. <coughs> Something certainly seems to have shaken him. <coughs> the waiter's business card has been entered into the court record. <coughs> he does seem suspicious now. So. The court has now heard a pres- a presses? A presses? Of the case. Yes, at the moment the gunshot was heard in the restaurant, the only person in close proximity to the victim was the defendant on trial today. It would seem we are looking at a black and white case here. Shut up! <laughs> defendant Naruhoro. Yes, Your Excellency? If you admit your guilt at this stage, the court is willing to look mercifully upon you. In other words, you may have some small reprieve in terms of your inevitable punishment. I called this waiter as an unsworn witness in order to explain the details of the case to the courts. But I must warn the defense if you are determined to pursue matters further in this trial. The prosecution has decisive evidence from sworn witnesses who were present at the scene of the crime. What do you think I should do, Kazuma? What do you mean? Well, I'm going to be found guilty one way or another, it seems. Wouldn't it be sensible to plead guilty at this stage and hope for a more lenient sentence? Everyone keeps telling me that this trial is unusual about these peculiarities. You said it, Professor Mikotoba said it, and so is the judge and the prosecution. I'm... I'm scared of what lies ahead if I push this. Coward! As I said from the outset, I believe you're innocent. I trust you. And yet, despite knowing that... You're willing now to throw that trust back in my face? Is that it? What? If the accused is, in fact, innocent, then a defense lawyer is duty-bound to prove that innocence by whatever means necessary. Are you just going to abandon that duty? Are you going to give up on yourself? The battle hasn't even begun yet, Ryunosuke. The defense pleads not guilty, Your Excellency. We invite the prosecution to stop making empty threats and bring out its witnesses. I'm so close to getting Sabotender Emperor. Nice! I really should save up for the 15 car. Okay, um. This is gonna come into play somehow. 
Let's see. I don't think there's anything on him that's weird. But there is a stake behind him. Pick salmon. Why won't they let me flip this card over? Going to the people. Sakura Hosoda. He's only 29? Wait. Uh, Kazuma's only 23. He's 29? Head waiter of the European style restaurant La Carnaval. He was serving there on the day of the incident. He looks like he's like 40 something. Damn. Did I read this? Then we'll just see just how decisive this evidence really is. I only need 100k? <gasps> so close! There's a second wine glass on the table. Yeah. And I, I thought the steak had something to do with it. Like, he was sitting with someone who was eating the steak, but I don't know. Prosecutor Aochi, please continue with proceedings. Well, you were warned. The young can be so reckless. You know, many call me a saint, but I can be a devil when I want to be. Ugh. In a few short moments from now. That dumbstruck young mouth of yours will be silenced forever. The prosecution calls its next witnesses. Wait, that's all that the wait- Okay, so the waiter is definitely uh, guilty. Because he didn't really give a full testimony. Very well. Officer, bring forth the witnesses at once. Ah, these guys. Witnesses, kindly state your names and occupations for the courts. Yes, sir. The great Nippon Imperial Army Sergeant Iesa Dosa. <laughs> yes, sir. No, sir. Iesa Dosa. <laughs> Reporting for duty, sir. Myself, I find employ. Wait, employ. As a purveyor of fine articles of antiquity from the efflorescence of a nation, Nippon. And conduct my trade from Rasute, a humble premises in the second district. Kyurio Korakuta, I just saw this. Korakuta? <laughs> Kyurio Collector! <laughs> an antique dealer and a soldier. What an unusual pairing. Both of these gentlemen were present at the restaurant on the day in question. It must be the diners at the other table that the waiter mentioned. Myself, I habitually take tea of the most exquisite aroma at the establishment in question, always post-noon, and not infrequently converse with interested parties regarding the curios with which I make my business. I can't understand a word that old man is saying. He's an antique dealer, and it sounds like he's a regular at La Carnival. He seeks out potential customers who may have an interest in antiques and tries to sell his wares to them. He obviously targets La Carnival because it's a high-class restaurant with rich clientele. Right, I see. Although, to be honest, that sergeant looks more like he'd be a seller rather than a buyer. Now, you both witnessed the precise moment of this most atrocious incident. Is that correct? Affirmative. The enemy unit was seen attacking the foreigner in what can only be described as an act of war, sir. It was that black uniformed rogue infantryman over there who unloaded his firearm, sir. This man's as impossible to understand as the other. But I'm almost sure I heard a strange noise during that last thing he said. So, this is the decisive evidence the prosecution was threatening. The soldier is claiming that he actually saw the precise moment you shot the victim dead. Yes. Well, are you starting to feel uncomfortable? If I'm honest, I was feeling uncomfortable from the start. Now, the court will hear your formal testimony, please. You will state everything you saw at the precise moment that the incident occurred. Sir, yes sir, standing by to ready to report. I heard a baby. Objection! Hey Golden, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Tuesday! Hmm. Unsavory memories of a most acerbic afternoon. Witness testimony. Okay, yeah, it's the waiter. What are you guilty of this time? I killed Watson. What the witnesses saw. 
I was ingesting a regulation beef steak at the restaurant while having a tactical discussion with a tactical discussion with the old man. Myself, I was extolling the virtues of a particularly fine golden curio to the military gentleman. At that precise moment, a firearm was discharged. I observed the enemy's actions with my own eyes. The black uniformed varsity cadet fired on the English civilian, and from the back, the cowardly little was all. From the back? The, the powder's on the front. I was on my hands and knees, investigating the whereabouts of my mysteriously absconded precious curio. He already told a lie. He already told a lie. Elementary, my dear Watts. Oh, <laughs> he's dead. Well, so you, Sergeant Nosa, actually witnessed a vital moment. You saw the split second when the defendant fired the weapon at the victim. Yes, sir. Affirmative, sir. That wicked university cadet, sir. The cruel and unforgivable enemy. <laughs> he pulled out a knife. What times we live in when an English gentleman may be assailed in a broad light of day. But this is ridiculous. I didn't shoot anyone. Is that really true, Yunosuke? Yes. All I did was pick up the gun I saw lying on the floor. After I'd said hello to Dr. Wilson, I went back to my table and sat drinking some coffee. Then, when I'd finished, I got up from my seat to leave the restaurant. When I noticed an English-made gun next to the chair where the professor was sitting. I thought perhaps the professor had dropped it. So I bent down, and just as I was picking it up... Bang! Well, if that's the truth, there was obviously a criminal on the scene somewhere. It was the lady that was with him, and she, like, ran away in the confusion. And somewhere in these two witnesses' testimonies, there's a clue as to who that criminal was. There is? Or maybe it's the old guy. All three of them are in on it. You know, Skate, you must exercise your right to cross-examine the witnesses. Cross-examine? Do it now. As we have heard, Your Excellency, there is no room for doubt in the testimony of these witnesses. The defendant is clearly- Are you stupid? You saw the photo. The powder's on the front of him. And they're saying I shot him from the back. You're... It is time to bring this despicable student to justice. Certainly. The testimony the court has just heard eliminates any vestige of doubt. Therefore, it is my grave duty to declare the verdict of this trial. Hi! What in the name of the Emperor is the meaning of this outburst? I, um, um, I mean, the defense demands its right to a cross-examination. Dear me, dear me. Let me guess, the Hachimaki headband boy next door told me to do it. How pathetic. Huh? How did he know? The bullet was just that strong and it went right through <laughs> It didn't leave his body, it said it on the autopsy report. Well, he just raised his hand. He's cute and he's respectful. The prosecution objects. This is a clear waste of time. The defendant obviously has no experience. How can he possibly carry out a cross-examination? The defense is asserting its right to a cross-examination. Whether or not you think he's capable of it is irrelevant. Kazuma is so commanding. Why can't Kazuma be the main character? Very well. Let the defense conduct a cross-examination of the witnesses. Alright, this is where the battle really begins, Rinosuke. But I don't even know what I have to do in a cross-examination. I do, I've played Phoenix Wright before. Isn't it obvious you have to expose the lies in the witnesses' statements? How? You didn't fire the gun, which means what the soldier has said had to be a lie. Well, yes, but... It's just a case of proving it, and the key to doing that is evidence. Right. Evidence. All you need to do is present some decisive and indisputable evidence that proves the witness is lying. Now let's go, Dudosuke. Don't let them beat you. <laughs> Alright then. It's all or nothing. Phoenix has got the table slammed down. Pat. But not Dudosuke. Hey Kirby, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Tuesday! Can 
Can I save, actually? Ooh, I can. Record save. Uh, yes. Okay. Um... Switch version? Yeah, Switch version. Came out today. At that precise moment, fire arts which are added to my own eyes, black and who fired on an elephant. From the back, cowardly little weasel. Guess what I have? Uh, oh shoot, but is it the... Okay, this says he's shot in the front, front so present. Hi. So what would happen if Phoenix worked with Sai Nijima? I'd pay to see that. Oh man, that would be awesome. Oh no, did I do it wrong? What? What are you playing at, cadet? What is the meaning of the subordination? Thrusting some photographic print in my mustache! In- Inconsistency, sir! I mean, yes! <laughs> Hair bun, bunny toast. Oh, I don't have a bun though. It's a ponytail. There's a clear inconsistency here! What nonsense! What can this print possibly tell us that we don't already know? Well, obviously. That, um... I know what I want to say, but the words just won't come out of my mouth. Apparently the timelines match up the end of Persona 5 and Phoenix Wright timeline. Ooh, nice! Maybe Saya Nijima, like, um, worked... Like, had cases against, um... Mia? And so Phoenix knows about her because he's like, oh man, I remember Sai as being the scary prosecutor lady. But then after Persona 5 ends, he's just like, oh wait, you became a defense attorney? What happens? Bunny toast, that sounds like wabbit food. <laughs> Made out of carrots. And lettuce. Actually, bunnies don't eat carrots. <laughs> I think this proves beyond any doubt, your excellency. That there is no place for an amateur student here in this grand courtroom. Hmm. Ugh. This is so frustrating! Oh, please. Surely this doesn't require an explanation. It couldn't be more plain. To spell it out would be an insult to the court. I love the song. This is actually my alarm to wake up in the morning. <laughs> Kazuma, what? What are you talking about? It's apparent from a single glance at the photographic print presented by the defense that there's a clear discrepancy here with the sergeant's statements. What? Sergeant Iyasa Nosa. <laughs> yes, sir. What, sir? The statement you just made was this. The black uniformed varsity student, a uh, varsity cadet, fired on the English civilian and from the back, the cowardly little weasel. Yes, sir. Affirmative, sir. I witnessed the crime with my own military-grade eyes, sir. Hi. But no, that can't, just can't be. And why not, cadet? Because... 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 Take a close look at the prince. Going to leave, don't want to spoil, have fun. Okay, Kirby, thanks for joining, have a good night! Thanks for all the cats! The victim, Dr. Wilson, died from a bullet wound to the chest. Uh. Sergeant, according to your witness statement, the culprit shot the victim from behind. And that is the obvious discrepancy here. Well, how do you explain it? Oh, there's a baby! Oh, um, uh, uh, well, uh... <laughs> what the... What was that? Something just popped up from behind his back, and he pushed it down again. Certainly, there is a clear discrepancy with the facts here. Would you not agree, Sergeant Nosa? Yes, sir. At this juncture, that would appear to be indisputable. Until the moment I heard the firearm discharge, my eyes were... Firmly fixed on the delicious luck carnival steak, sir. What? The last testimony the court heard has proven one thing beyond all reasonable doubt. 
this, this witness, Sergeant Yesanosa, did not see the defendant firing a gun at all. Ugh, that's... that's absurd. I think the conclusion we must draw is simple. There is no place for an amateur prosecutor here in this grand courtroom. Inconsistency seer awarded. Because, 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 because of the wonderful thing she does. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Nah, I want steak. I just had dinner, so thankfully I'm not hungry today. There's been a complete turnabout in the mood of this trial, just from that one discrepancy. Kazuma's so awesome. Ugh. So this is what being an ace attorney is all about. Ace attorney! But, but I definitely saw him! That university cadet there! He was pointing the firearm directly at the victim's back! Hi. But I never fired the gun! All I did was pick it up off the floor! Hmm. And you, old man. You didn't see the moment the victim was shot, either? Myself... I have already been quite clear. The gunshot interested me not. I was far too busy on the floor. Too busy on the floor? Sorry, what were you doing? Hunting for treasure! No, I think you dropped something and you misplaced it. Treasure? Indeed! The Hoe Era Koban! My prized coin! On each occasion when I visit that restaurant, it is my habitude to place in my bosom pocket a particular trinket of interest from my shop, Rasute. In the hope of meeting a rich diner who might like to buy it from you? On the day under scrutiny, it was to the military man that I proffered my Hoei treasure. Believe that he would purchase that such a rare find, I did not, but I was presented with little alternative. And then, after averting my eyes for the briefest of moments, it was there no more. It simply vanished! Kazuma? Kazuma cured you? Oh my gosh, oh I have to download the new um, Smash Pass to get Kazuma. Totally forgot about him. The Koban vanished? Hunting around under the table, I was... In case mayhap it had fallen there, and then it happened. You heard the gunshot, you mean? Indeed I did, but I heeded it not, for I was concerned only with finding my absconded Hoei treasure. Nothing could distract me! Out of interest... Did you find the coin in the end? No. Hmm, I see. That lamentable day, the precious Hoei Koban was lost to me. No doubt some unscrupulous scoundrel pocketed the prize coin for himself. As I am sure everyone present is aware, this case demands a swift and decisive resolution. Our government has promised to send a full report to Great Britain by telegraph this very afternoon. Nevertheless, the witness testimony the court has just heard was inconclusive. No matter how subservient our government feels it must be to the British, it would be unforgivable to deliver a verdict on this trial right now. Hmm. What is your position, Prosecutor Aochi? Oh! Ouchie, like, ouchie. Oh my gosh, wow, why did it take that long to click? There's a crossover for you, Phoenix Wright, Persona 5, and Yakuza. Oh, damn. Yes, that would be awesome. <laughs> Worry not, your excellency. The defendant may have fled a tiger at the front gate, but he will find a wolf at the back. My witnesses have further testimony to make. Explain. Upon hearing their next statements, it will become abundantly clear that there is only one person who could possibly have committed this despicable crime. The equally despicable defendant, Ryudosuke Naruhoro. What? He really seems to have a despicable opinion of you, doesn't he? Uh. Here's a new drinking game. Take a shot every punny name. <laughs> Very well, the court invites the witnesses to testify again. You will thoroughly explain the reasoning behind the prosecution's allegation. Is that clear? As clear as Kiriko Glass, Your Excellency. Yes, sir. At once, sir. A waiting signal to testify, sir. The baby pocketed the coin. Um, excuse me, but there's something 
or someone peeking out over your shoulder, I think. Affirmative. The newest member of the Nosa family to rise up to the ranks, sir. Name, Aido. I don't know, sir. Oh my gosh. I don't know, sir. <laughs> it would seem these the straps are a sign of the sergeant being too strapped to afford a nanny. Aido. Tension! Your father is about to quell the enemy. Watch and learn, my boy. Ew, look at that snot coming out from his nose. Drink plus one. <laughs> you know what? I got my tea. Let's drink. The true culprit. Even if what I saw wasn't the precise moment the firearm was discharged, it's almost the same thing. No, it's not. Yes, pointing his gun at the foreign man he was, that young lad in black, that much I s myself could see. Furthermore, a visual search of the premises at the time confirmed that we were the only personnel present. Indeed, alone he was, the Englishman, dining all by himself. Therefore, no one other than the black uniformed cadet could have dispatched the Englishman. Over and out. Ooh, this is a little trickier. Hmm, these testimonies are certainly compelling. <gasps> Wait, that's, that's nonsense. The victim, Dr. Wilson, wasn't alone at all. Please, enough of these outbursts already. There was a woman! There was a young woman at his table! You must have seen her! Everyone there must have seen her! If you call yourself a lawyer, then you will respect the rules of the court and speak accordingly. We are not here to listen to your fantasies. Uh. It is evident beyond all reasonable doubt that the victim was alone at the time of the incident. The prosecution has photographic evidence of this fact. Is this a photographic print of the scene of the crime council? Indeed, of the table at which the victim was dining, taken by an investigator immediately after the incident. As can plainly be seen, there is only one place set. Certainly, based on the appearance of this print, it would be reasonable to conclude that the victim was not in the company of anyone else. Ah, uh, this doesn't make any sense. The court will add this new photographic evidence to the record. Photographic prints, carbonated water, and a steak lunch can be seen on the victim's table. I don't know. Okay. Uh, examine. It's a cow head. Um, I'm just getting the sauce. Like some kind of marking on the table? No. Okay. Huh, what? There doesn't seem to be anything that shows that there was a second person. Let me check the other photo. So that means this glass here must be the vase. Wait a minute. Wait. Okay, I was gonna be like, did the wine glass, um, the wine bottle placement move, but no, it looks about the same. Yeah, I don't think it really matters. I have Gatorade, so that'll do for me. Noice! Oh man, now I want some orange Gatorade. I bought some more chocolate milk today. Except it tastes kind of funky. I don't understand. What's going on here? It's just not possible that nobody else saw that woman. The waiter before us said the same thing. He maintains that Dr. Wilson came to the restaurant alone as well. But that's not true. I saw her. I swear that I saw a woman with him. It would seem that we'll be able to telegraph the report to Great Britain on time after all. The witness testimonies we have just heard leave no ro further room for doubt. These are very sensitive political times, as we all know. The ink is still fresh on the treaty with Great Britain. To think that I, Takatsuchi Aoji, <laughs> will have contributed to the amity of those two great empires is an honor. How can this be happening? The judge is ready to rule. Stand tall, Yunosuke. It's not over yet. Thank you, Kazuma. What? 
If what you say is true, then there's something going on here behind the scenes. And now is your chance to expose it, to draw out the truth in your cross-examination. I... I don't know, Kazuma. The defense is entitled to cross-examine the witnesses, but make it quick. Understood? <laughs> Rules can be so unbending at times. Ugh. <sighs> okay, so I'm just gonna have to keep pressing to see anything different, because there's no physical evidence I could show. I have orange in my fridge, purple- There's purple Gatorade? I don't think I've ever paid attention to purple Gatorade. That's because I only look for orange. It's almost the same thing. No, it's not. Yes, pointing his gun at the foreman. man. He was that young man in black. That much I self did see press. Give more details, please. Yes, it may be true that I was holding the gun at the point in time. But I've told you already, that's only because I picked it up off the floor. Well, obviously, as a culprit, that's the only way you could explain it away. I just finished drinking my coffee, and I was about to leave the restaurant when... I noticed a gun on the floor at Dr. Wilson's feet, so I picked it up. And at exactly that moment... Dang. A gunshot rang in my ears. <laughs> For little events beyond their control, life is... Sorry? What do you mean? In your case, you found a pistol on the floor and picked it up, which has precipitated this testing predicament. This testing predicament. Whereas conversely, I failed to pick up the Koban from the floor and find myself in an equally testing predicament as a result. Anyway, the fact remains, myself, I did see you. With pistol in hand, standing over the foreigner. Furthermore, visual search of premises at the time confirmed that we are the only personnel present. Is there anything on the map? Magnifying glass. But if I magnify, I mean, we can kind of see a print on the other side that shows that, like, the waiter dude's name, like, no, blah, blah, blah. But I can't read kanji backwards, and I just can't read kanji at all. Wait a minute. Is this, like, drawn on? There's like a border and it looks like it's like It looks like it's pasted or something Yeah, what the heck is this? Hello, this is weird Unless that's part of the art No. Okay, so I guess the card comes into play later Um, How do I go to people? Bar? I guess I can't ex show people. Hmm. Indeed, alone he was the Englishman dining all by himself. Therefore, no one other than the black uniform cadet could have dispatched the Englishman over. Okay, maybe this is one of those cases where I have to press every single statement, and then they'll have new um new information. New game. Your avatar looks like an idol. Hey, Nier, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Um. Yeah, I guess- oh, wow, the avatar really looks like Daido, but I meant to draw, um, Yunosuke. Also, I got ending E! Oh my gosh, it was- oh! Oh my gosh, Nanoja, it was amazing! Oops, not- not- oop. I want to press. Ending E was from the novel, so I was- like, I knew kind of what to expect, but then they added stuff that I did not expect, and I was like, What the heck is happening? But it was so good. The cutscene was so beautiful, yeah it was, and then in the end when the flower bloomed, I was just like, F you, F you, flower. Oh, but it was so good. And now I ha just have to um, upgrade all my weapons and go fishing. And then I'm done. You must have noticed someone else at Dr. Wilson's table. There was a lady there. As you have been at pains to point out time and ag again, I feel I'm growing a callus in my ear. Yet, no one else appears to have caught even a glimpse of this woman. Uh, if only there had been more people dining here at the time, then someone else would have noticed her. Unfortunately, it was already past 2 p.m. when it happens. The quiet time between lunch and dinner in any restaurants. I know, of course the place is almost empty. That's what you'd expect. Certainly, 2 p.m. is neither here nor there in terms of a time to eat. 
I eat at two, excuse you. I wonder if there was a reason why the victim was eating at the time of day, and why he was alone. Yes, Your Excellency, there was indeed a reason. There was? See, you ha this one you have to press every single statement to get new information. My friend told me that Automata's story is canon in FF14 as a sequel to Automata. Yep. It exists. Yeah, the raids are crazy, but they're fun. This was found in the victim's jacket pocket. What is that, Council? It is a medical report card, Your Excellency. It would seem that the victim had an appointment at a clinic prior to visiting the restaurants. Hmm. What the clinic? Yes, there would indeed appear to be an entry for the date in question. 19th November, noon to past 1pm. Hmm, the very day of the incident. So the victim went for a late lunch following his appointment. The explanation couldn't be more simple. The prosecution felt no need to submit this evidence before, as it really had no bearing on the case. I wonder... What do you think, Yunosuke? Hmm? Well, it is hard to see how it could be related, really. Remember, you can't request for it to be entered into the court record as evidence if you think it could be useful. Should I ask for Dr. Wilson's medical report card to be submitted as evidence or not? Uh, duh, yes. Hi! If I may, I'd like to ask for that medical report card to be submitted as evidence, Your Excellency. On what grounds? Um... The court has already heard conclusive witness testimony. Additional evidence will be extraneous. Not to mention that the victim's movements prior to his arrival at the restaurant are of no concern. Whether or not they are of concern is up to us to decide. We have a right to explore all possible avenues. I... I beg your pardon? You have no authority to refuse a perfectly valid request for the submission of evidence. Very well, the court will grant the defense's requests. <laughs> Youngsters these days are forever asserting their rights. It is a most disturbing trend. Officer, kindly add the victim's medical report card to the court record. Victims, okay. Let me... Okay, court record... Examine. I can't examine this? Okay. What we, what we need right now is new clues. We have to explore things from every possible angle, even if they don't seem relevant at first. Right, I hear you. Hmm. You can conspire to prolong this trial as much as you like, but it's the day after the festival already for you. Or perhaps you've forgotten that these witness testimonies leave no room for doubt. Feel free to reiterate for the accused, Korakuta-san. Korakuta-san. Um, I just want to examine this. Okay, I really can't examine it. It's just this. There's nothing closer to look at it. Mm. Okay, just keep pressing. So you actually saw that with your own eyes, did you? The victim, Dr. Wilson, dining alone. That I did. Forgive me for the position I placed you in. So the testimonies of the old man, the soldier, and the waiter all agree on that point. Isn't that interesting? And let us not forget the incontestable evidence we have to support their statements as well. As can clearly be seen, there is only a single beef steak on the victim's table. A meal for one. No. The antiques dealer, the sergeant, and the waiter who testified before. It's not impossible that they're all lying. But if so, then why? If I'm perfectly honest, I have absolutely no idea. Oops, that was Junyosuke. Therefore, none other than the black and the blah press, press. Why aren't you telling the truth? What? What did you say, Cadet? I clearly remember. There was a woman sitting across the table from the professor. Perhaps one of you might not have noticed. But for both of you to have failed to see the professor's dining companion, it's just not possible. Unfortunately for you, Defendant Naruhodo, it's not just a case that of these two witnesses alone. Sorry? The waiter, whose testimony the court heard earlier, clearly stated the same thing. He also said that the victim was alone. 
That's right. Precisely. In other words, you are the sole a proponent of this phantom lady. But... but I... If such a woman were indeed present at the scene, the prosecution demands to see proof. And if no such proof exists, the prosecution demands that no further mention of this phantom woman be made. It is a blatant waste of the court's time. There's nothing I can say to that. <laughs> Excellent work, Ryosuke. We've gleaned some new information now. Well, yes, but I don't feel like it changes much. I can't see that it brings any real discrepancies to light. I wouldn't be so sure. Let me see that medical report card you got before. Oh, you mean this? Why does his bandana constantly flow into non-existent wind? Because he's that amazing and beautiful and fabulous. Yes, this is a brand new piece of evidence. So perhaps we should examine it in a little more detail. How exactly? You'll notice that some pieces of evidence bear a magnifying glass. These are the ones you may examine. Press A and you can take a closer look at the piece in question. Use R R R R. I can move it now! To rotate the evidence in all directions and examine it from all angles. By using L L L L. Yes, I get it. You can move the crosshairs around to hunt for clues that may have been missed before. If the crosshairs start to pulsate, press A to investigate further. That's why they wouldn't let me examine the metal report, report further because of the stupid tutorial. So, partner, I think you should take a closer look at this medical report card. See if there isn't something new to be learned by examining it in more detail. Well, guess what? I'm gonna examine everything in detail now. Uh, time of death shortly after 2 p.m. Blah, 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 no exit room, but not pass through the body. Okay. Okay, so this one I can't rotate, but this one I can move the crosshairs. I mean, magnifying glass and nothing happens. But this one, can I rotate it? No, I can't, but I can magnifying glass. That doesn't help me right now. Excuse me, I cannot rotate anything. Do I have to... Alright, I'll see what I can do. I need to use R R R R la 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 and A to inspect any areas of evidence that look suspicious. Oh great, now I have it now. Oh hey. Why is the back bent? Let's have a look. This is some kind of medical history. Ah, and there's an entry for the day the professor was killed. Extraction of molar with topical anesthesia. Extraction of molar? You mean he had a toothache taken out? Then he wasn't the one eating the steak! It would seem so. Just before the incident, he'd had a bad tooth removed. Perhaps they used laughing gas. That's the most modern practice in the West for pain relief. Yes, I've heard of this anesthesia. Although it's hard to believe there's anything that can actually stop you from feeling pain. Ah, there's a cautionary note for the medical practitioner as well. Strictly no food or drink besides water for three hours post-procedure until anesthetic effects have passed. Really? Sounds like information worth bearing in mind. Yay! Record of dental work. On the day of the murder, the victim had undergone dental treatment and had been prohibited from eating or drinking anything but water. With this new information, the meaning of that one particular statement totally changes. So, I think it's time we listen to the testimony again, don't you? Definitely. Even though it's almost the same thing. Heard more, only one personal present. Dining all by himself, then I can present this. No, present. Hi! Um, um, well, I think, um... About what are you wondering, lad? Call yourself a lawyer. I wish I could, but first and foremost here, I'm the accused. Yunosuke. Everyone stumbles on their words occasionally. Under the circumstances, I wouldn't worry about it. Thanks, Kazuma. I could see it quite clearly in that cross-examination you just carried out. 
when you raised your hand straight up like that, so purposefully, you knew exactly what it was you wanted to say. Don't feel like you have to choose your words carefully. Just say what you're thinking. Alright, and thanks for the advice. Correcta san. This is a medical report belonging to the victim. Ah, I see. And I don't see. What of it, boy? Comparing what is written on this report card with your witness statement. <laughs> Something clearly doesn't add up. Dear me, dear me. Have you forgotten my words so soon, you amateur? Sorry, what? You are not to interrupt court proceedings with your amateur's drivel. But... Let's see if I can explain in words you might understand. It was after 2 p.m. in the afternoon when the victim was murdered at the restaurant. Whatever he may or may not have done before that time is completely irrelevant. Uh, but... That's... um... Remember, Dudosuke, you don't have to use clever language or fancy words. Just make sure... just make your point. Your Excellency, I believe we're finished here. There's surely no need to prolong this trial further. Hmm. The witness testimonies the court has heard have been clear and concise. This medical report card has no bearing on the matter at all, for the simple reason that... There is no one else besides this pale-faced pupil who could possibly... Uh, okay, this just one head. This medical report card has nothing to do with the case? Do you really believe that? What? That outburst half petrified me, boy! Of course I believe it! How could it possibly be relevant? Perhaps because Hotza Clinic, which issued the report card, is a dental clinic. A dental clinic? Is that supposed to mean something to me? Perhaps if I told you that the victim had just had a tooth extracted? What's this now? And furthermore... If I told you that as a result, the victim had been forbidden from eating... Just... just what are you trying to say, cadet? He had orders not to eat? So what? It's all written up in here. No food or drink other than water for three hours post-procedure while anesthesia wears off. What? No, that... that can't... Correct us on. What, boy? What? As you just heard, when he was killed, sometime shortly after 2 p.m., the victim couldn't have been eating anything at all. No. Additionally, there's more... Oops, that's Nosa. You have assured the court with unwavering self-confidence that the victim was dining alone. Oh, he got it! He got the palm slam! But that cannot possibly be the case. Grr. Because the victim, as we now know, had just had one of his teeth extracted and was still experiencing the effects of the anesthetic. Ah! Expertly done, partner. What? What is this nonsense? You little upstart! Ooh! Hey, sub! Thanks for the 14 month sub! Take this! <laughs> How you been? Long time no see! I hope you've been well! These are baseless accusations. Just, just look at the photographic evidence. Look at this photograph. Every time I that makes me laugh. You can clearly see the plate of food at the victim's table. Use your head. That's the very discrepancy we're talking about. Or can't you follow the logic? <laughs> How dare you! I think it's fair to say that the tables in this restaurant's case have turned. Wouldn't you agree, Junosuke? Hmm? Yes! Most definitely! So having just undergone some dental surgery, the victim was unable to eat. Which leaves one very crucial conundrum. Who, in fact, was eating the pictured beefsteak? How about the lady that everyone says they didn't see? The court will hear an opinion of the defense on this new puzzle. I assume you're ready, counsel? Counsel? Oh, that, that means me, doesn't it? Alright, the answer to this question is going to be pivotal. 
This is the start of your turning this trial around. Show them what you're made of. But before I do that, I am going to save just, ooh, just in case I do the wrong answer. Okay. Got it. So, um... The person eating the steak at the victim's table must have been... The victim himself? <laughs> it was me! The two witnesses and as yet unknown third party. Yeah, I'm gonna say this because the other guys were on the floor. Obviously, it could only have been someone else who was sitting at the professor's table. You did not let this go, will you? There was no such person. There was, because I saw her. When the incident occurred, we know that the victim couldn't have been eating anything. Yet we have evidence of a half eaten steak on his table. Therefore, the only logical conclusion is that there was somebody else there eating it. <sighs> we have strong evidence to support our assertion. It's clear that these witness testimonies are unreliable. Get the waiter back in here. If the court decides to push through a ruling at this stage, we will lodge a formal complaint with the Ministry of Justice and pursue a fair retrial, relentlessly. Kazuma, are you insane? You, you would take on the government? Don't worry, Council. I have no issue with you. What do you mean? I have issue with them, the two witnesses in the stand. What? What are you talking about? We have demonstrated with evidence that the victim was not alone. So, if it now turns out that the two of you deliberately lied when giving your testimonies, Obviously, you will be charged with perjury. Perjury? And, since this is a murder trial, you will also be deemed complicit in the killing. Complicit in murder? No! Hold it. Negative. There was no mention of this at the tactical meeting. Uh, what meeting? I was just following orders. That's right, as the man says. Just say you never saw the gentlewoman. That's what they, um, told us. Thanks for adding yourself. Oh. What? What did you just say, Kodakta san? Oh, um, no. You were just following orders? Now hold on, lad. I was, um... Say you never saw the gentlewoman? Grrr. When you say gentlewoman, do you mean... You saw the victim with a lady from overseas? What? What? What is the meaning of all this? These witnesses gave false statements? Is this true, you pair? Just one... Just one simple... Slip of the tongue! Dun, 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 dun. Order! Order! Council, explain what is going on here. It's painfully clear now. You tried to prevent these witnesses from telling the truth. Absolutely not! The prosecution knows nothing of this! <laughs> then who's behind this? Who tried to make you keep your mouth shut? Well, um... That's classified. So you're prepared to be tried as a conspirator to this murder, are you? You... You wouldn't. This can't be happening! Yunosuke, judging from the way they're reacting to this, I'd say they were sworn to silence by someone with considerable influence. However... I don't believe Aochi had any idea about it. What are you saying? I mean, to wield that kind of influence, there are only a handful of possibilities. It could only have been the government, the military, or... Or the police, I suppose. Well, any ideas about who might be behind this? If we confirm who tried to silence these witnesses, then we can continue our pursuit. So we need to name whoever it was that tried to make the witnesses keep their mouths shut. I'm gonna guess it was the waiter. So I'm gonna make a save, just in case I was wrong. Because we have to look at the back of his card. We never look at looked at the front of his business card. Of 
course, we'll need evidence before we make any firm accusations. Evidence that proves whoever it was really did wield his or her power here. But how? How can we possibly... Remember how we made progress before? Before? We examined this piece of evidence in more detail and found a new clue as a result. Oh yes, that's right. Well, that's not the only piece of evidence we have, is it? We need to re-examine everything and make sure there's nothing we've missed. There's no time to lose. I want answers! If it's proven that these witnesses have been manipulated, I assure you the penalty will be severe. Can I examine it now? Or is there going to be like- I really think this is shady! This plan at a restaurant raises a number of questions, I think. Definitely. It's supposed to show the relative position of everything in a moment following the incident. But there's nothing to show the woman you say you saw there. Exactly, and that's not all. Look here in the upper left where it says kitchen. Hmm? Oh yes, what of it? No one would use those complicated characters to write kitchen, especially not if they were in a hurry. You mean you don't remember those characters yourself, don't you? Study harder, you know, Scan. There's gotta be... Thank you. Chief Inspector Satoru Hosonaga, Primary Criminal Investigation Division, Imperial Police Bureau. Knew it! Well, that's unexpected. What is? Look, do you see it says the witness's name here? Satoru Hosonaga. Well, yes, business cards do tend to show the person's name. That's sort of the point. It's not the name that's unexpected. It's his job title. His job? Oh! Chief Inspector Satoru Hosonaga. I'm trying to guess what pun his name is. Satoru... Hosonaga. Hosonaga. I can't think of what word it could, would be a pun for. Inspector? What on earth? I have no idea. But let's face it, the police have a lot of power and influence if they're wielding it somehow here. The waiter's business card information has been updated in the court record. Woo! Okay, so it still says he's a waiter. Okay, so Iesa Nosa is 38. Army Surgeon of Empire of Japan. Curio Correcta is 67. Raste. Raste? Last day? I don't know what it is. Anyways. Please wait, Your Excellency. I had no idea about any of this. I swear to every Shinto god. I knew nothing! And what does the defense have to say about all this, hmm? Um, well, Your Excellency? <sighs> no time to think. I'm just going to have to close my eyes and shout out the first thing that comes into my head. Besides the prosecution, the only person with the necessary influence to manipulate the witnesses is... This dude. Hi. Well, surely that would be... Satoru Hosonaga-san. Hosonaga-san? The waiter who took the stand earlier? Poppycock. What possible reason would the waiter have to make these witnesses give false testimony? Not to mention the fact that even a head waiter could not possibly have that level of influence. For once, I would agree with you. If, that is, the man truly were a waiter. What? If he truly were? Come on, Yunosuke. Time to hit the court with the truth. The truth about Satoru Hosonaga's real identity as proven as by this evidence. Hi! The plan of the restaurant sketched by the man in question? Hmm. I agree it shows a great deal of attention to detail, but I'm not sure we can conclude anything. Sorry, Your Excellency. That's the back of the card. It's the back of the back of the card that's of interest. I beg your pardon? Or, or perhaps I should have said, the front? Yes, it's the front of the back of the card. That's where the telling detail is. Would somebody please explain what this overexcited student is trying to say? Hosnaga-san sketched a plan on the restaurant on the reverse side of his business card. The front of that business card reveals the man in question's profession, his true profession. The waiter's profession? But that surely... Good. Good gracious! That's right, Your Excellency. The card reads, Chief Inspector, Primary Criminal Investigation Division, Imperial Police Bureau. What? The, the waiter is... a police detective? I... I haven't heard any mention of this before. Why haven't I heard any mention of this before? 
The Imperial Police Bureau has immense power. Absolute power, as far as regular civilians are concerned. So, witnesses there in the stand? Was it in fact the waiter who gave you your orders? Was it he who told you not to mention that you'd see this foreign gentleman at the scene? Um, well... Hold it. Inspector Hosonaga! I was worried something like this may happen. The moment you asked me to submit my sketch as evidence, I realized there was a possibility. The court will take blah 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 out to a court record as evidence. Is there a problem? Hand the plan to the court officer at once. Um, of course, here you are. Yes, I remember now. He did act strangely when the judge asked him to hand over his business card. I strive to carry out all investigations flawlessly. It's my guiding principle. But I let myself be distracted when I made that sketch. It was an unusually careless mistake. So, you mean to say, you really are a detective? But why would a detective be working as a restaurant waiter? Ah! Of course, your salary must be terrible. I was working undercover. <laughs> salary must be terrible. Undercover? Yes, there have been a series of incidents at the restaurant recently. In order to investigate, I decided to get a job there as a waiter working undercover. Incidents at the restaurant? What kind of incidents? That would be classified police information, which I am not at liberty to divulge. However, I can state categorically that they are unrelated to this case of homicide. Hmm... Very well then, Inspector Hosonaga. But you will elaborate on one point for the courts. Of course, Your Excellency. We have just heard new information from the two witnesses beside you. That at the time of the shooting, there was in fact another person present at the victim's table. If that is indeed true, clearly you would also have been aware of this person's presence as having served the table in question. However, your testimony did not allude to this other diner, therefore I am led to assume that in your professional capacity as a police officer, you required these witnesses to be in agreement. Would that be correct? Correct, Your Excellency. Unbelievable! Hmm, as I suspected. Bang! As soon as I heard the gunshot, I ran out of the kitchen to see what had happened. The victim sat slumped in his chair, and beside him, gun in hand, stood the accused student. Sitting opposite the victim at the same table was a young lady, whom I guessed to be an Englishwoman. So the truth comes out. I immediately sealed off the restaurant and reported the incident to the Bureau. It was then that I received some... special orders. Special orders? You mean to say... Remove the Englishwoman from the scene at once. It was made clear that the Englishwoman's presence at the restaurant was to be concealed. Those were my orders. But... but what if this Englishwoman was the killer? I think it would be in everyone's best interest not to pursue that idea. It's not in my best interest, so shut up. The Empire views friendly terms of its relationship with Britain more highly than anything at the moment. An English man has been murdered on our soil, to name an Englishwoman as the primary suspect. Well, without irrefutable evidence, that would be completely out of the question. It's better to have an English person kill an English person than a Japanese person kill an English per- Like, what? What? That doesn't make any sense! So that's the reason for the disappearance of the phantom woman in this case. But it's not right! One possibility does spring to mind. What do you mean, Kazuma? 
Yume University is currently hosting a number of exchange students from Great Britain, and I'm fairly certain that one of them, studying in the medical faculty's research laboratory, is a young Englishwoman. What? You're a shrewd man. I can see why you're the chosen candidate for the overseas study tour. You mean... When I removed the woman from the scene of the crime, I thought it prudent to check her identity first. And the court demands that you name the lady in question at once, Inspector. The Englishwoman sitting at the university professor's table was a certain Miss... Giselle Brett? Giselle Brett. What could that be a pun for? Giselle? Giselle Brett. She is indeed a foreign student studying at the research laboratory of Yume University's medical faculty. What? What is happening here? Giselle Brett. Giselle Brett. Giselle Brett. Giselle Brett. I admit that under orders from the police bureau, I erased all evidence of this lady's presence at the scene and ordered these witnesses to make no mention of her in their testimonies. It must now be up to your excellency to decide how to deal with the situation. Very well. My thoughts on this matter are as follows. Thus far, the case presented to the court has been underpinned by a particularly critical premise. Namely, that the victim was dining alone. However, as we have now discovered that this premise is false, it would be a des desecration of our justice system to ignore the truth and give a ruling at this point. But, but, Your Excellency! That would mean missing the due deadline of a ruling in order to send a telegraphic report to Great Britain! Our own government will surely be very displeased by such actions! Calm yourself, Council. I will not allow the government of our country or any other to influence the proceedings of my courtroom. Uh, Inspector Hosonaga. Yes, sir. You will locate this Giselle Brett and escort her to the courtroom with utmost urgency. Giselle Brett? Giselle At once, Your Excellency. But, but that means you'll be going against the special orders you were given from the police bureau. As I said before, it is my guiding principle to carry out all investigations flawlessly. So, it won't be a problem? <coughs> nothing will get in my way. Then what- uh, yeah, nothing makes sense here. Court will adjourn briefly. The prosecution must call the English student Giselle Brett to the witness stand. Do I make myself clear? Yes. Your Excellency! Is this supposed to be like just a little brat? Giselle brat? <laughs> I don't know. Good, then we will have 30 minute recess before reconvening. To be continued! I guess that would be a good time to stop, but I- No, I really want to finish this first case at least so that we get rid of all the tutorial stuff. But yeah, because I played Phoenix right before, all of this is so easy, and I'm just like, yeah, this is obvious, let's go! 22nd November, 11.38 AM, Supreme Court of Judicature Defendant's Antechamber 5. Still gotta get on 14. Yeah, I know, I know. Excellent work, Nudosuke. That was superb. Ugh, my heart was in my mouth the entire time. It was almost unbelievable. I mean, looking at you in there. You were drenched in sweat, your eyes popping, your knees knocking, and you were grinding your teeth. Arm spaghetti. There's vomit on the sweater already. Mom spaghetti. It was a grim sight, but before I knew it, you started finding inconsistencies in the testimonies. I think you might have a natural talent for being a lawyer. Forget it, it's terrifying. If I get through this, I don't ever want to see the inside of a courtroom again. Ha 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 ha! Anyway, it looks like we've exposed your phantom lady at last. Miss Giselle Brett, a student from Great Britain. Is she? 
That's what I was trying to tell everyone from the start. Dr. Wilson wasn't alone. He has a young woman with him, like I've been saying all along. Yes, you have, haven't you? I might not be overly confident in the courtroom, but my powers of observation are one thing I'm sure of. Yes, I can see that. So, about this young gentlewoman. Thanks to our detective friend, she was hastily escorted away from the scene, it seems. Did you see what happened with that? No, I didn't see any of it. I was just on my way out of the restaurant myself, then on the floor next to Dr. Wilson's table. I noticed there was a gun lying on the floor, and just after I bent down and picked it up... Bang! I didn't have time to think about where the sound of the gunshot had come from. The waiter ran over to me, looking as white as a sheet, and he bundled me into some sort of small pantry next to the kitchen. Fast thinking by the detective, he apprehended his suspect without a moment's delay. Yes, and because I was shut in the pantry, I have no idea what happened outside in the dining area. Hmm. Ah, there you are. Well done, both of you. Excuse you, sir. How dare you? You're the one who told me not to make Kazuma my lawyer. Professor Mikotoba. Well, it seems I was right. The pair of you make an outstanding team. You've exceeded my expectations, I have to say. Yes, it seems you planned this from the start. You arranged things so that I wouldn't be able to act as a lawyer in this trial. Our modern country is still in its infancy, our justice system even more so. Which is why... I firmly believe that we need to send our brightest young stars overseas to learn all they can. I wanted to avoid situations that may have resulted in your study tour to Great Britain being cancelled. Well, it makes no difference. Lawyer or otherwise, if I'm the kind of man who can't help his best friend avert the worst crisis of his life... I shouldn't waste everyone's time by going to study overseas anyway. What? What are you saying, Kazuma? Hmm. So that's your stance. I was afraid you'd feel that way. Kazuma! Well then, it looks like it all comes down to you, young man. To... to me? Yes, you need to prove your innocence and uncover what really took place in that restaurant. I must say, I very much want you to know the truth. After all, I have a personal connection to this case. Come to think of it, he said the same thing earlier this morning, didn't he? Um, if you don't mind me asking, Professor... Did you know the victim? Yes, I did. As you're probably aware, Dr. John H. Wilson was a visiting professor at Yume. And it was I who invited him. Oh, I see. I... I didn't know that before. Anyway, you're about to go into battle. The victim was a university professor from Great Britain, and a well-known one at that. Naturally, our government is lucky to identify and punish the culprit as quickly as possible. But let's not forget who we're going up against. The gentlewoman whose involvement our police bureau went to extraordinary lengths to hide. Yes, and I'm sure the prosecution will be using every tool at their disposal to quash your case. But I've no doubt that your pair will put up a good fight right to the last. Best of luck. Thank you. You can see two people at the same time now when you talk? Yeah, you can! Now then. I need you to run an errand at the university at once. There's something I think we may need. Of course. Good luck, Kazuma-sama. Defendant Naruhuro! Court recess is over. Please make your way back inside to the courtroom at once. Aww, now they know I'm innocent and they're being nice to me. It's time. Let's get back to it, partner. Let's go in there and deal a decisive blow. Before those old fossils know it's hit them. Um, Kazuma? What? Thank you. Really? What for? Well, if you hadn't said you believed me, then... I'm fairly sure I'd already been found guilty by now. 
Look, I have faith in you. As a lawyer, and as a friend. Coming from you, that means a lot. If I'm found guilty in this trial, he's really going to give up on his dream of studying abroad. That's the kind of true friend he is. So this isn't just my battle anymore. Whoever we're up against, we absolutely cannot afford to lose. Morning, Monkeys! How you doing? Thanks for joining! Hope you've been well! Alright then. I'll say the thank yous for after the trial. You can treat me to one of those sukiyaki meals I like from Yume Cafeteria on the University Street. With an extra large portion, of course. Forty second November, twelve oh nine p.m. Supreme Court of blah 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 Court Two. Do it, okay? Just gonna lurk since I'm monster hunting. Ooh, have fun monster hunting! The court hereby resumes the trial of Yunosuke Naruhodo. Prosecutor Aochi, have you managed to subpoena the witness? Yes, Your Excellency, against all odds. And thanks to a certain young stripling, the prosecution is now under rather painful scrutiny from the government. Uh, sorry. Let the government scrutinize, that's their job. It's nothing to worry about. It's highly unlikely that the good relations we forged with Great Britain will emerge from this trial unscathed. Will you still think it's nothing to worry about when the new treaty breaks down in our nation, Founders? Again, terribly sorry. If the friendship between our nations is really so fragile, then the treaty isn't worth the paper it's written on. You really have nothing to worry about, Yunosuke. What do you mean? A secret trial, anxiety over some foreign government's opinions, and bungled investigation, missing witnesses... Is this what our nation's justice system is? Is this the Supreme Court of Japan, or of England? Shut up! Shut up, you jumped up rookie boy! Oh, your friend knows nothing! Nothing of the situation our nation finds itself in! By aligning ourselves with this great world power, we'll become strong! Diplomacy has never been more critical! Steady political maneuvering is what will secure our futures. I won't deny that I'm no expert. I'm just a student, and one who could arguably study harder too. But standing here now in our Supreme Court, there is one thing that I feel very strongly. A country that fails to uphold the truth in its justice system is a country with no future at all. Well said, Yunosuke, despite the wide-eyed look of terror. You little brats! Thank you, Council. This court is the pinnacle of our nation's justice system, and exists solely for the pursuance of truth. With that in mind, this trial will now resume with the next witness taking the stand. The visiting student from Great Britain, Miss Giselle Brett. Yes. Your Excellency! Wow, extra large portion is so greedy. Damn, he's got some balls. <laughs> what the heck? She has a swan on her head. Oh, what a delight it is to welcome such a fine gentleman to Japan and from such distant land. Tea! Someone bring English tea! In England, no discussions take place without tea. Is that true? No idea. So, um... <clears throat> Could we possibly trouble you to state your name and occupation for the courts? Of course. My name is Satoru Hosonaka. I have been working undercover as the head waiter at La Carnival, but my true- Yes, yes, we know all about you already. Inspector Hosonaga, where are your manners? In England, it's always ladies first! Is that true? No idea. More importantly, a little earlier today, you said something to me. You said your powers of observation are the one thing you're sure of. Oh, yes, I think I did, didn't I? Yet your description for this amazing sight was simply a woman. <laughs> Sorry, Junosuke, but powers of observation aside, your powers of description are sorely lacking. Guilty. 
So, dear lady, once again, if we may trouble you for your name and occupation, please. What the F are you saying? What the heck is that? Um, I'm terribly sorry, dear lady, but... What? <laughs> this is all a front. She... She's speaking English? Uh... Oh yeah. You're probably right. But I feel like she's doing this as a front. I feel like she could actually speak Japanese and then like when we finally out her, she's gonna be like rah, 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 As all Phoenix right? um, bad guys do. The lady says her name is Giselle Brett. She comes from London, England. She's a visiting research student currently enrolled in Yume University's medical faculty. Oh my, what a rare treat to hear the dulcet tones of the delightful language of the British people! I'm afraid I don't understand a word you said, but it was as beautiful as a hummingbird's song. As far as I can tell. The detective is translating her words faithfully enough. Yes, I agree. Haha, <laughs> you'll obviously do fine in England, Kazuma. Her English doesn't rattle you at all, does it? Nor are you. You've clearly been paying attention in your English classes, Yunosuke. Of course, this is Phoenix Wright game. Mm-hmm. The court thanks the beautiful lady for taking a stand. Now, if we may trouble you to confirm something, Miss Brett. Three days ago, at a restaurant called La Carnival, a grim murder took place. The court has been led to believe that you were dining there with the victim, Dr. Wilson, at the time. Is that correct? She says, yes. <laughs> this could take some time. <clears throat> oh man, doing all the low voices are hurting my throat. So even though she's stunning here in Japan, she can't speak any Japanese? She'd like to apologize for disappearing from the scene. She says that she was due to make a presentation at the university, so she had to leave immediately. Interesting, when you're the one who engineered her escape. I was just following special orders from the Bureau. Well now, dear lady, would you be so kind as to cast your eyes over this photographic print? Seeing as you were so unfortunately present at the scene of the crime, could it be that your resplendent eyes caught sight of the wicked perpetrator, perhaps? Apparently, it was a very frightening and sorrowful sight. Do you mean to say? Yes, it would appear the lady did witness the crime. The very moment when the accused, standing right there in this courtroom, shot the victim in cold blood. Oh my gosh, she, the, she has tail feathers on the back of her dress, oh my goodness. Order, order in the court. Did... Did you hear that, Your Excellency? Here we have an absolutely conclusive witness statement! Hmm... Well, it looks like it's clear now. Clear who our real enemy is. Unfortunately, I will have to ask you to formally testify, if you please. Kindly tell the court the exact nature of this frightening and sorrowful sight you described. I don't trust you for a minute, lady. Prepare to show your true colors. A frightening and sorrowful sight. I had arranged to meet for a slightly late luncheon with Dr. Wilson that day. The professor was unable to eat, so I ordered for myself only a beefsteak. After a while, the accused came over to greet the professor and they got into a fierce argument. Then, not long afterwards, the accused took the professor's gun and shot him right before my eyes. I don't 
don't carry a gun myself, so obviously it couldn't have been the culprit. Hmm. This is a condemning testimony indeed. No, I, I didn't have any kind of argument with the professor at all. Quiet, you filthy wretch. Look at you, you black-hearted blackguard. And look at this Snow White Angel. I'm sure even a dark-minded scoundrel like you can imagine whose words the court is going to believe. Wow, it's like, I believe her. <laughs> I don't believe her. Also, it's like you're going to take the word of a, a foreign lady over one of your own countrymen. It's like, hmm, for all talks about loyalty and, you know, strengthening your country, this isn't the way to do it. You're still making the same mistakes, Yudosuke. You mustn't blurt out when you're goaded like that. That's a lesson you need to learn. Uh, but he's so annoying. Of course, I was at the scene as well. I took statements from this lady and the two witnesses who testified before and reported back to the Bureau. It was decided that Miss Brett was not involved, so I let her go. The testimonies of the last two witnesses were completely worthless, however. Well, even so. On the day in question, the lady was wearing the same outfit as she is today. As you can see, there is nowhere about her person where she could conceal a firearm. Really? Really? You don't think she could hide it in her butt feathers or, you know, what? I would think she could hide a gun in almost anywhere in that outfit if she wanted to. Unless and until the precise location where the witness is to have to... to blah, 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 blah. Where the witness is had... Where the witness is to have hidden a weapon can be shown, this is moot. There are no pockets in my outfit. I have nowhere to hide a gun. Those are the witness's own words on the matter. Ugh, that's ridiculous! If only I was allowed to lift up her dress, I could prove it! Don't think about doing anything rash, Yudosuke. I didn't fire the gun I picked up! There must have been another gun there that day! You're right about that. Which means, this lady was hiding a gun somewhere. Yes, that's what we have to prove now. And to do so, we will need to pull her testimony apart. Show your face. Look at that smirk. The swan is the gun, bullet honker. <gasps> oh, it could be. It could be. Oh, yes, Your Excellency. What What the judge say? I'm, whatever. That's not important. Testimony time. I mean, cross-examination time. Range slightly late lunch for Dr. Wilson that day. What did you want to talk about? After 2 p.m., in fact. That's really quite a late lunch, isn't it? You don't keep up with the latest fashions from Britain, do you? Late luncheons are on vogue, isn't that right? No, it's not. No. Ugh. Hmm, a decisive English no has quite a sting to it. The gentlewoman is currently working in the victim's research laboratory, it seems. So it's apparently a daily occurrence that they would lunch together. But on the day in question, the victim had another appointment at the clinic first. Yes, which we can prove from the medical report card that was submitted as evidence earlier. That's right. Miss Brett and the victim went for lunch following the victim's treatment, which is why it was so late. Yes, yes. That all makes perfect sense. Such wonderful logic! What a shining example of English intelligence this fine gentleman is! So you both arrived at the restaurant. What happened next? The professor was able to eat, so I ordered for myself only a beefsteak. Can I look at some... Okay, so I can't examine people when it's cross-examination time. I can't change to people. Uh... Why would the beefsteak be pushed closer to him if she was the one eating it? That make does make sense. Anyways. Uh, press! Hi. He was unable to eat, you say? And that was because he just had a tooth removed at Hota Clinic, correct? That's right! Um, you're supposed to actually check with the witness before answering. Was Miss Brett aware of that fact? It seems so, yes. She'd heard that the professor was to have some dental treatment. So that would mean... That it was you who ate steak in the picture here. It was you who ate the steak picture here. Is that right, Miss Brett? 
That's right, yes. The print you have there shows the table exactly as it was left after the horrifying events. Exactly as it was left? Dear me, what a harrowing experience! To have traveled to a distant island on the far side of the world and to be embroiled in such a tragic incident. incident. Have no fear, my dear lady. I swear I will crush the evil fiend that has subjected you to this terrible plight. So the victim, Dr. Wilson, had nothing to eat or drink at all? That's right. Other than some carbonated water. Just water? Yes, the professor was unable to eat, but he had been given permission to drink water. So it appears that the diners toasted their lunch with a glass of water each, but there's only one glass there. Hmm, they each drink a glass of carbonated water. What do you think? Do you know, Ske, about the witness's last statement? Uh, it's very meaningful. That last statement of yours, Miss Brett, has a profound bearing on this case. Well, well, how fascinating. Do tell us, what is this profound bearing, hmm? The significance of the statement will become apparent when the time is right. The defense calls for the witness's last statement to be formally added to the testimony. Hmm. Well sidestepped, counsel. Very well, Miss Brett. Kindly repeat what you just said to be added to your official testimony. Gladly, she said. That was brilliant, Cosma. I'm going to remember that last that, that I'm going to remember that one. Which one? The significance will become apparent when the time is right. I could really use that phrase. I hope there are some more useful tips you're picking up from this experience than that, Rinosuke. This one doesn't actually have a gun in it, she just pulls back the feathers and the neck stretches out to stab him with a dang! <laughs> in the end, it's all the swan's fault. Okay, uh, gonna save just in case I'm wrong. I was like, why the heck does my Switch say it's 10.48 a.m.? It's because I'm time traveling in um, Animal Crossing. Whoopsies! <laughs> um, we are going to present this photo. Wait, but which photo is it? It was this one, right? Because that... This, uh... Yep, the music stops, so I'm right. That's it! Let me just confirm something, please. It's to do with this photographic print. Just a short while ago, you spoke of this print showing the victim's table at the crime scene. That it was exactly as it was left. That is correct, the lady says. Well, that is... it's, um... it's odd. Very odd. Dear me, what's odd is the defense's inability to express itself. Ugh. You know, Skip, what is it about the print that looks odd to you? Well, obviously, it's... It's the cheers. The cheers? Miss Brett just told us that she and the professor said cheers over a glass of water. But if that's true... There should be two glasses on the table, not one. Ugh. You're quite right, Council. There's only one glass pictured here. Are we supposed to be impressed by this nitpicking over minutiae? What possible difference does the presence or absence of a glass make on the case? Minutiae, you say? Could it be that the detective here removed the glass from the table to conceal the lady's presence? Of course not! I would never do something so reckless. There should have been two glasses on the table. Or are you going to try to tell me you can clink with only one? You're quite right. I certainly took two glasses to the table. <laughs> Shut your damn trap! <laughs> Inspector, what did the lady say? It would seem that it was Miss Brett who took the glass from the table. What? It was also terrifying, everything that happened. I panicked and thought I should try to hide the fact that I'd been there at all, she's saying. 
Because you're doing something shady! Good gracious. Then where's the cup? Sorry. Goose Game needs a secret beak stab mechanic. Kakashi style up and butt. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there, as I shared the quirk before, this is of no consequence at all. Oh, please. You must remember that this student had just murdered this lady's luncheon companion before her very eyes. Who could blame her for concealing a glass or two in her state of disarray? That's absurd! Oh, really? So do we take it that you are not going to accuse this vulnerable, young, and beautiful woman of mischief? I'm accused- No, I'm gonna accuse her of murder. No, no, no. This can't be put down to mischief. I'd like to know. Exactly how the lady took the glass from the scene. It would seem that she slipped it into a small handbag she was carrying. I can't have a gun! There's no pockets on my dress! You had a handbag! Yes, Your Excellency, a small handheld pouch commonly carried by well-to-do women in England. So the beautiful lady has very, very graciously explained how and why she removed the glass from the scene now. However, the fact remains that this glass has absolutely no bearing on the case. Hmm... This student has been trying to confuse the court with logical reasoning. <laughs> logical reasoning shouldn't confuse anyone, it should tell the truth, you dumb idiot! But in the end, it comes to nothing. No more pretentious accusations, you have wasted enough time already. Indeed, the lady has offered a satisfactory explanation as to why she removed this glass. I think henceforth we can consider the matter to have no bearing on the case. Counsel for the defense, are you in agreement? Hells no! She had a handbag! Um, well, I don't know, really. If you want to pursue this matter further, you're going to need to show that it has some deeper significance. Yes, you're right. So she took the glass away in her handbag. If there's a deeper significance there, it's... The handbag! Wait, the lady put the glass in her handbag, you say? Yes, do try to keep up. It's already been explained to the court that all English gentlewomen carry handbags for small items. Let me see. A little while ago, Miss Brett stated the following. There are no pockets in my outfit. I have nowhere to hide a gun. But what she forgot to mention was her handbag. In which would be perfectly possible to conceal a gun. You're right. Well done, partner. I had a feeling you'd pick up on that, too. <laughs> None! <laughs> what are you insinuating, you vile blackguard? It's really very simple. The gunshot was heard when the defendant picked up the gun from the restaurant floor. As he didn't fire that gun, we can deduce there must, been, must have been another firearm at the scene. The true murder weapon, if you will. You, you can't seriously be suggesting. Inspector Hosonaga. Yes? Did you or did you not search Ms. Ms. Giselle Brett's handbag on the day of the murder? No, sir, I did not. As I thought. In other words, another gun, the one that was actually used to kill the professor, could have been hidden in Miss Brett's handbag. <laughs> no! Order, order, order! What is the meaning of this, Inspector? The meaning of what, Pro Prosecutor Auchi? Why on earth did you not have the lady open her handbag to show you the contents at the time? Thanks to your bungling incompetence, now she has to endure these uncomfortable accusations! Brilliant work, partner. Now we have a chance to expose the real woman behind the mask. Do you think so, Kazuma? Guilty! <laughs> well, what a sorry situation. Clearly, you have no faith in the police. As I said, I did not search the lady's handbag after the shooting. Simply because... 
It was unnecessary. Unnecessary in what way? I ought to thank the student lawyer, really. I have a piece of evidence here that I have completely forgotten about. This photograph of Pints. This print is of a photograph that I thought would be prudent to take immediately after the shooting. There is a mark of the beefsteak plate on his hand. Why is that? As you can see, it clearly shows Miss Brett's handbag. Well, I never. I can see it right through to what's inside. That's right. Apparently, meshwork bags like this are the height of fashion in London at the moment. Hmm, so the contents are clearly visible. Exactly. So there was no need to search the lady's handbag. If there had been a gun inside, it would have been immediately ob obvious. Ah. As you can see, there's nothing to imply Miss Brett's guilt here. Thank you for helping to prove that, Naruhoto-san. Mm. Wow, that's... that's very dramatic. Order, order! Inspector Hosonaga, you will submit that print as evidence at once. Certainly, Your Excellency. The photograph of the handbag has been entered into the court record. A photograph taken by Hosonaga-san after the incident occurred, it shows Miss Brooks' handbag on a chair by the victim's table. It also shows John Wilson's hand branded with the steak thing. But why? Okay, so now I'm going to examine the people to look at. Giselle Brett, 24, a British exchange student who was studying under the victim at Yume University's medical school. And his is still as uh, the waiter. Okay, so if we look at the evidence, examine. Why is this on his wrist? Was the steak plate still hot? No, but then he would have yelled. And this chair is behind him. Hmm, I don't... What could be the significance? I don't know. I don't know! Think you've had long enough to cross-examine the witness council. Shoot, I feel like I should save because something important's gonna come up. Yeah, it says July... It says April 6th for my switch date. <laughs> it is not April 6th. The court has now been shown considerable evidence. As the photographic print just submitted into the court record appears to have no further significance, I am satisfied that there is no longer any room for doubt in this matter, and I must make my ruling. Indeed, and there is only one logical conclusion. That the pathetic rookie slope slumped over the bench before us is the only possible perpetrator of this crime. No. Just when I thought I was beginning to turn this things around. I'm in a worse situation than I was at the start. Um, Kazuma? I'm sorry, Yudunosuke. Now that the cross-examination of the witness is over, there's no way to force the trial to continue. What? You... you mean... this is it? <laughs> I must say, you put up quite a fight for a rookie student, but the weak are meat while the strong eat. You were wasting your time. There's no way to defeat true justice. A fact you can chew onto your heart's content from the inside of your cell. This can't be happening. Am I really going to be found guilty of a crime that I didn't commit? And Kazuma. His dream of going to study in Great Britain will slip through his fingers. Kazuma. What? Is there really... Is there really no chance now of turning this trial around? You heard the judge. There's nothing about that last photograph the detective produced that we can contest. Which means, there's no basis on which we can argue for the trial to continue. Very well, I will now proceed immediately to the ruling. It seems we will be able to report to the British government on time after all. You said noon was the deadline. It's afternoon, you dumb idiot. That smug little. 
You know, Skenaruhuro, having considered all of the evidence placed before me, I hereby find. Hi. Wait, Your Excellency. You know, Ske? I. I don't think you can rule on this case yet. This amateurishness is, is getting tedious. When His Excellency deems that the trial is over, he gives his ruling. That is the most basic protocol of the courtroom. Hi. Ooh, what is that wrist guard he's wearing? That's cool. Your Excellency, just a moment ago you said this. As the photographic print just submitted appears to have no further significance. There is no longer any room for doubt in this matter, and I must make my ruling. Now that means if there was a problem with the evidence, some significant detail I mean. The ruling on the case at this time would be out of the question. This blatant straw clutching! Look at this photographic print! All it shows is the handbag the gentlewoman was carrying on the day in question. There can be no problem with this evidence. You better know what you're doing, Ryunosuke. Hmm. I understand your objection, counsel. Certainly, the new evidence submitted by the detective has not undergone the court scrutiny. Caught on stream time traveling? It's because I'm redesigning my islands, and I'm like so behind that I'm just like, I'm gonna catch up now. It's good time traveling. I'm not cheating. <laughs> I'm in the past. However, I fail to see how we can glean any new information from this handbag. Ha! My thoughts exactly. Really, the prosecution is becoming tired of this rookie's desperate wheezes. Yes, I'm desperate, but this isn't a wheeze. There's something about this photograph which just doesn't seem right. If only I could put my finger on it. Very well, I will grant the defense one final opportunity. Oh, save now because it's one final opportunity even though I think I know what's right. Okay. But be warned that if I am unsatisfied by your response here, the trial will be over with immediate effect. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Your Excellency. So, take another look at the photographic print Inspector Hosonaga submitted before. You will identify for the court where in the print we see a significant detail to which you have alluded. This. Hi. Look at this here. There's a very unusual mark on the victim's wrist. That is true. It looks almost... Like a burn of some description. Dear me, I was pondering what new piffle you would come out with. A burn, you say, on the victim's wrist. Clearly that has nothing whatsoever to do with the magnificent lady's handbag. Yes, that is a burn mark. You're right. Go on, Inspector. The police coroner also noticed that when he was performing the postmortem examination. It was deemed unrelated to the cause of death, so he didn't note it in his report. What did I tell you? In any case, we have no idea when the victim suffered this burn, do we? And no possible way of knowing either. The more I look at it... Oh, this judge. The more I find myself intrigued by the curiosity of this mark. However, as Prosecutor Aochi points out, unless a firm connection to the case can be shown, I cannot allow any further time to be spent on the precise details of this burn. Excuse me, Your Excellency. It would seem Miss Brett has a lunch appointment with the Dean and other university staff. She would like to know if she may be excused from the stand now. No, you can't. I gotta send you to jail. Oh, of course, of course, dear lady. We shan't hold you up any longer. I'm quite sure His Excellency is about to give his final ruling anyway. It's clearly a rocket ship. <laughs> Oh, she is sucking on that lady's dignity like a magic of sucking water. Oh, damn. Seriously, he's sucking up so much. It's like, stop it, dude. What's your thinking on this, Junosuke? Do you believe this burn does have something to do with the case? To be honest, I'm not really sure. I am. But if I don't keep pushing, then it's all over. So I was thinking I should keep digging and digging. In the hope that I might uncover something useful. Yes, you're right. I am... We can just link that bird to the case. 
if we can do that, we might be able to prize the shutting door back open again. Just give up, Council. You can't possibly hope to do that. How'd you become a lawyer? Your powers of observation are sorely lacking. Indeed, I'm afraid that without evidence, I can't allow you to pursue what is little more than conjecture. But if we have evidence... Evidence that irrefutably linked the burn of this victim's wrist to the case, then you would allow it? I would, yes. To tell the truth, I hadn't noticed that burn. But as soon as you pointed it out, what I did notice was the color draining from Miss Brett's face. Really? I have to find some link between that burn and the case. This is the moment of truth. It's time to find the evidence that proves what that burn really means. So then, the defense will now present its evidence to the court. The evidence that demonstrates an inextricable, inextricable connection to burn burn and the trial. Um, where is the mark more clearly noticeable? It's not that one. It's this one! Is that? Hi! What's this, Council? Yet another prince? Yes, Your Excellency. I believe the photographic prints are an amazing invention. When we humans look at a scene, we miss things. But in a photograph, things we may have overlooked at the time are recorded forevermore. Do hurry up, Rookie. What are you trying to say? To inconvenience this poor lady any further really would be quite inexcusable. Actually, we may need you to stay with us a little longer if you don't mind, Miss Brett. You see, it's very clearly visible in this other photograph. How did the victim come to have that unusually shaped burn on his wrist? The reason is recorded here forevermore. What? How? You can't fool me with your little bluffs, boy. If that's your game, then let's see how it plays out. Show the court exactly what you mean. What is in this photograph that explains the reason for the victim's burn? Man, they're great at dragging out dialogue to make the, you, them so annoyed. Hi. The... the beefsteak? Actually, the point is the metal plate the steak was served on. The plate? Ah! Ah! Your Excellency, are you alright? Oh my god, this gives you... the game gives you to run around so much. Yeah. It really does. It's just like... They just... Keep dragging out the dialogue to infuriate you. It's, As you can see, there's an emblem on the plate. I would guess it's some sort of trademark of La Carnival. Ah. This emblem on the plate. And the victim's burn. Are exactly the same shape. Ah! Yunosuke, you genius! You're spot on. Which means the victim must have suffered this burn while he was present at the restaurant. So what does the burn have to do with anything? But even if that is the case, we can't know if it happened on the day in question or not. It could have been the day before, or the day before that. It most likely happened at some other unrelated time. Well, um... Hmm... Sadly, Prosecutor Alchi, the chances of that are extremely slim. Thanks. Why? The outline of the burn is clearly discernible. Such a serious injury would have caused quite a commotion in the restaurant. Wouldn't you agree, Inspector Hosonaga? I can't imagine having missed such a terrible disaster, certainly. So that burn happened after he died, then. But... but... I would say, looking at the picture of the wound, that it wasn't suffered very long ago. And, although it's not particularly large burn, it's extremely well defined, as the defense just pointed out. This was no mild burn, that's for sure. Can you be more specific, Inspector? Well, let's see. If the plate was uh, around 90 degrees centigrade, a burn like that would have taken around 3 seconds. It's inconceivable that the victim wouldn't have let out a scream of pain then. 
I've been investigating at the restaurant for several weeks already, but I've not heard anyone scream at all. As the head waiter of La Carnival, I can testify to that without hesitation. But you... You're a detective, not a waiter! So there was something on his person that, um... That... Giselle wanted. Wow, is he a scientist now? He's just that smart. There you have it. Something isn't right here. As the detective said, anyone who burned themselves on the piping hot plate for three whole seconds would scream in pain. There's no question of that. And yet, Inspector Hosonaga never heard the professor scream, not on that day or any before it. That's right. And the strange thing is, on the day he was shot, I didn't hear him cry out either. What are you suggesting? Well, if the professor had carelessly laid his wrist on the plate for anything like three seconds that day, that would be beyond careless, I think, Counsel. Then the rest of us in the restaurant, myself, the sergeant, and the old antiques dealer, all of us without any question, have heard him scream. Wouldn't you agree, Prosecutor Auchi? Hmm? Um, well, yes, I suppose. Wait, hold on a second. Hmm? Okay, bye. Oh, did you hear the knock? <laughs> so the question is, why didn't a single person hear Dr. Wilson scream? I, I almost don't believe it. You know, Skit, do you think... Can it really be true? I never dreamt we'd arrive at a conclusion like this, but... I'm starting to think that maybe... We've been led into a terrible trap. Of what? What trap? There's only one explanation I can think of to make sense of this apparent impossibility. On the day in question, when he suffered the burn to his wrist, Dr. Wilson... Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna save! But going with my gut, I think he was already dead. No man could remain silent while his wrist was burning on a piping hot plate for three whole seconds. That's clearly impossible. Apart from one particular situation. Counsel? Are you suggesting... Yes, it's only possible. If the man was already dead. Already... Dead? Knowing what we know now is the only possible explanation. When the beefsteak was brought to Dr. Wilson's table that day, the professor was already dead. That's... Wait, you went to talk to him! That's madness! Order, 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 please. Counsel, explain this absurd notion at once. The victim was killed by a gunshot. That's right! That's absolutely right, Your Excellency! This, this is just another ridiculous ploy by the rookie student, but clearly he has no grasp of the facts! No, Prosecutor Auchi, it's you who has no grasp of the facts. I beg your pardon? As soon as it became apparent that the victim had suffered that burn while at the restaurant, this whole case had turned upside down. Or have you not grasped that yet? Wait, so maybe he... No, but he was killed by a gunshot. There was no other way he could have died. Like, by poisoning or whatever. Uh... Your Excellency, the court must hear from this witness again. If it's true, as we now believe, that the victim was already dead before the gunshot was heard, it's highly likely that Miss Brett knows something about it. Incredible. I certainly didn't anticipate this twist of events. I'm sorry to say, Miss Brett, that you will have to forget your luncheon engagement. But, Your Excellency... The justice system in our country may be in its infancy, but rest assured, all reasonable doubt must be dispelled before I am prepared to pass judgment. Thank you, Your Excellency. 
Show your true colors. Come on. Come on. There we go. Let's go. Oh, damn it. She put the mask back on again. What was that smile? Yes, of course. I mean, I'd be delighted to help. Especially if it helps relations between my country and yours. Uh, Miss... Miss Brett, you speak Japanese? Well, of course I do. I am studying in your country after all. But then, why have you been speaking through an interpreter until now? My mother tongue, the Queen's English, is the most refined and elegant lang- Wait, she's British, whoops. Language in the world. As a gentlewoman, I try to avoid speaking in your vulgar terms as much as possible. Wow. But it seems the men in this land possess none of the chivalrous virtues of the English gentleman. So I can see that I shall have to lower myself to communicating with, all, with you all on your own level. Oh, uh, well... You are the epitome of a true English gentlewoman. We are truly honored by this... This lavish consideration you so graciously afford us. I see. In that case, Miss Brett, I will now ask you to testify in your own words. About the events leading up to the death of the victim, Dr. Wilson. So, we're finally getting to hear her own words on the matter. Things are getting interesting, Ryunosuke. Wow, not only is she a murderer, she's an a-hole too. Yep, of course she is! Well, unfortunately, I have no idea when the poor man burns his wrist like that. When the waiter brought my steak, the professor and I broised our glasses in a toast. As far as I have heard, the post-mortem repose showed no other possible ca cause of death besides the gunshot. If there's some other way a man's life can be taken without leaving a trace, please do show me. But of course, this country's inferior investigative techniques probably wouldn't pick up on it anyway. It's the glass she took. It had poison in it. They said cheers! He drank it. He died. He, he got burned. And then she did whatever she had to do. She took his glass back. And then she shot him. Or like, she made the gunshot ring out to have everyone believe he died of a gunshot. The first cases in Phoenix Wright games are always like pretty obvious. And then after that, um, it's, it's like, who the hell did it? The poison was in the ice. Oh wait, wrong riddle. <laughs> that most captivating and beautiful testimony will go down in Supreme Court's history. Thank you. Easy does it. Oh wait, but she's speaking Japanese, so she doesn't have an English accent. Whatever. I hope that's the last time I will have to sully my lips with the coarse tones of your unbecoming tongue. Oh. Forgive me. I do hope I haven't insulted anyone. Not at all. Not at all. It is merely a delight to hear you speak, my lady. Oh, you're gross. And it seems very clear from your testimony that this boorish talk of this victim's burns is utterly irrelevant. I will be speaking to your country's Minister of Justice about what happened here today. The Minister of Justice? May that irritating little bully of a student be given the harshest punishment possible. Wow, my voice with her is very inconsistent. Um... Amen. Amen what? You agree to yourself? That... what? Huh? Um... thanks? Was, was that a prayer, then? Well, you'll have to forgive the irritation, Miss Brett, and put up with the cross-examination now. I expect you've noticed that this little bully of a student, as you put it, doesn't miss much. I'm sure I don't need to remind you, Council, that this will be your final cross-examination in this trial. Good, then it's almost over. If you fail to demonstrate any problems with this witness's testimony, I will be ruling on the case immediately. Is that clear? Oh, Cutie, psych yourself up. Yes, Your Excellency. Then you may proceed with the cross-examination. I have no idea when the poor man burnt his wrist like that. When the waiter brought my steak, the professor and I raised our glasses in the toast. It's 
far as I've heard, the post-mortem report show no other possible cause of death besides the gunshot. If there's some other way a man's life can be taken without leaving a trace, please do show me. But of course, this country's inferior investigative techniques probably wouldn't pick up on it anyway. I think I'm just gonna have to press, like, a lot of statements, um, because, yeah. I'm pretty sure, like, it's this. That's the poison. Because otherwise, why would she hide it? Why did she feel the need to take the glass? But let's just press the statement. Hi! Yes, it's written here in the paperwork. Fatal hemorrhaging from ballistic trauma. Yes. Luckily for all of us, a little burn on the wrist isn't going to kill us. And as there were no other signs of trauma on the victim's body to indicate some other cause of death, it could only have been the bullet from your gun that put an end to this innocent man's life. But it doesn't make any sense. The burn must have appeared happened straight away when the plate was first brought to the table by the waiter. Yes, that's true. If it had cooled even slightly, it wouldn't have been able to make a burn like that. And if the victim burnt his wrist on the hot plate as soon as it was brought out from the kitchen, then he must have already been dead at that point. And yet, the fact is that the victim was killed by a gunshot to the chest. Until you're able to show the court evidence to disprove that, this is a complete waste of time. I concur. Prosecutor Auchi is right. Ugh. Okay, can't press the last statement yet, or else it will go... Okay, press this. As you testified before, you are drinking carbonated water, is that right? Dr. Wilson was only permitted to drink water at that time, if you remember. Which explains why he ordered that drink, correct, waiter? Exactly as you say, sir. Although... Although... Whether or not the professor actually drank any of the water when I delivered the steak to the table... I'm afraid I don't remember that. Hmm... Damn you. Ah! I have enough English to understand that! Oh wait, yeah. At least, for the benefits of others in the court, it means bless you! No, it does not. Um, I think it means the exact opposite. Anyway... Yeah, 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 let me press this. This is where... Oh, whoops, I already pressed this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me just get back to the statements. Okay. Let me press this. Without leaving a trace. If someone is shot or strangled or stabbed or thrown from the heights, however a person's life is taken, there are always telltale traces on the body. Quite right, dear lady. And as a police force has thoroughly examined the body of the deceased, there can be no doubt. Isn't that right, Inspector Hosonaga? As I've said, I've always aimed for a flawless investigation. Hmm, there would be physical traces with all those causes of death, that's true. But maybe there's some other way of killing someone that doesn't leave a mark. If, heaven forbid, you doubt me, young man, you're going to have to tell everyone how exactly you think the professor did lose his life. Otherwise, I'm afraid your argument falls rather flat, doesn't it? Oh no, perish the thought, calling such a sweet young lady's innocence into question! On my honor, I, Takatsuchi Auchi, will cut down any who dare cast such aspersions. Hmm, a way of killing someone that leaves no trace. We need some evidence to back us up here. Yes, evidence. Man, I feel like poison would be the evidence. Um, let's press this, just in case. If his hand was on the searing hot plate for at least three whole seconds, you can't not have noticed. Do you think so? Let me ask you something. Sorry? Ever since I arrived at this courtroom, and even still now, the fly on those unsightly black trousers of yours have been wide open. You can't not have noticed, can you? Huh? What? Ah! Ha! <laughs> what fun! You hadn't realized. 
The dear lady is absolutely right. As your friend, you've embarrassed me as well as yourself, Unosuke. Why didn't you tell me? Dr. Wilson was a true English gentleman. He chose honorable silence after a vulgar scream. Can your tiny brains imagine such a thing? Oh yes, I think my tiny brain can. She's clearly insulting you. Well, I can't. Anyway. Okay. Um. I I want to say it's poison, but I don't have any clear evidence of poison, so I'm probably gonna have to press that last statement. He had to be knocked out somehow. This wouldn't show anything. Okay. Let me save, press the last statement, and then hopefully I will get some new information. Okay, press. Hi! Inferior? What do you mean by that? In the lands of the Great British Empire, the police store everything found at the crime scene for later examination. But in this country, you investigate once, and that's the end of it. Isn't that so? Quite right. La Carnival is open for business as usual today, just days after the incident. Exactly. Which means that even if the investigation takes a different direction, vital evidence may be lost. <laughs> what? What? Oh my gosh, he, he acted. Oh, this is scary. Is the swan spit poisonous? Maybe the swan spit into the glass? That had a sus. <laughs> it doesn't even occur to you, na naive detective, to try to preserve the crime scene. I'm trying to be as tactful about this as I can, you understand? Haha, <laughs> a killer blow. The lady is as formidable as she is beautiful. We don't even know her real face. Amazing. He's actually admitting our police may be flawed. Perhaps Prosecutor Ouchie is finally starting to see sense. I very much doubt that. Still, there's something about what Miss Brett just said. There was a moment before when something didn't seem quite right. What do you think, Dudosuke? I think it's going terribly. No matter how much I press her, I'm not turning up any new information. Yes, as I suspected. She's a tough witness. We need to find a way to break her testimony, or cross-examination will be over. But, but that would mean... I have to find a way. There must be some clue where to help us find out chink in her armor. Kazuma. What, Rinosuke? There is one thing I noticed. Something that's been bothering me. Bothering you? You mean... about Miss Brett? Actually, no. About the person standing next to her, Inspector Hosunaga. The detective? Yes, he seemed to react a little strange to Miss Brett's last statement. I was wondering if it might be significant, if it might present an opening, maybe. Hmm. Alright, I have an idea. Try pressing her on that last statement one more time. If you think so, but... But this time, instead of targeting the woman herself, let's see what we can get out of the detective. Alright then. I wonder what Cosmo's thinking. Oh, so this gameplay, um, examining other witnesses, came into play during um, Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright. I'll find out soon enough, I suppose, once I press Miss Brett on her last statement again. Yeah, 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 shut up, shut up, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. Press. Hi. Is he going to do karaoke and then beat the crap out of some Yakuza? <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, I can't rush through this or else I'm gonna miss a sign. Go okay. <coughs> you coughed. How do I change? Yes, there it is again. The detective's reaction is just the same as before. Why? Up until now, the detective has been in stand with Miss Brett as her interpreter. But things are very different now. For this testimony, the detective is just listening to what the Englishwoman has to say. This could be a golden opportunity. What do you mean? When people are actually testifying, they're usually very careful not to let anything slip. However, when they're listening to someone else speak, you'll find they'll often let their guard down. You're right. Look at him. He's lost in his own thoughts. It's time. To pursue the man and his train of thought. Sorry? Pursue? 
I'll explain how to do it now, Yosuke. It's all to do with the witness marker. What marker? At the moment, we're focused on Miss Brett, who's the person actually making the current statement. But by moving the marker left and right with the D-pad, you can turn your attention to other people in the stand. While you're looking at the other witnesses, you'll be able to pursue them with A. If you could cast a person at just the right time, you might uncover some new information to pursue. If you ever notice a strange atmosphere amongst the people on the stand, take a good look around. Alright then, so first I should move the marker across with D-pad and focus on the detective. Then pursue him with A and see what's on his mind. Here we go! Oh, Kazuma ha 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 ha. I'm trying to move it. Okay, there we go. Chotto! <laughs> yeah! What the? What's the meaning of this? <coughs> I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to shock you. He really was lost in his thoughts. Deeply. It looked like you were thinking something just now, Inspector. Perhaps having heard what the lady next to you had to say... If there's something you'd like to say, please share it with the quartz. What is the meaning of this? It's the delightful Englishwoman who's testifying at the moment. If you can't find fault with her testimony, then the cross-examination should be over immediately. Oh, is... is that how it works? Absolutely not! Hmm? The detective is in the stand, which makes him a valid witness. That's not how it works either, but whatever, we'll run with it. Yes, not to mention the fact that he's intimately involved in the case. Inspector Hosonaga? Yes? Do you have something to add, in relation to the statement just made by Miss Brett? Well, yes, if you don't mind, I would like to speak. The lady is right. Our country's police practices are not as modern as those used in Great Britain. Which is why I, Satoru Hosonaga, always strive to make every investigation I'm involved in flawless. What do you really mean by that? I'll tell you what I mean. I won't have ed evidence lacking on my watch. I'm not afraid to take everything I can from the scene of the crime. It's preserving evidence, you see. I don't care if they call me a crime thief. Thief, I'm not ashamed of what I've done. <coughs> a crime scene thief? Well, it looks like the lady's remarks touched a nerve there. Take this, for example. Is that... This is the bottle of carbonated water that I took to the victim's table on the day in question. And yes, it's lost all of its fizz, having been opened three days ago now. But it was carbonated water. I don't care what anyone says. Yes, there's some left in the bottle. I can see it. One day our police force will be among the best in the world. The time is coming, I guarantee it. <coughs> I can't say I condone the witness's actions, but I do understand the sentiment. The court will accept the glass bottle of water as evidence. Oh my gosh, did Hosonaga drink some of it and that's why he's con continuously coughing? Because he's like, oh, let me take a swipe of this bottle and then he's just, it's poison. Carbonated water the victim and Miss Brett shared on the day of the murder. It was on the victim's table. Hmm, Miss Brett. Can you confirm this is indeed the bottle from which you drank on the day of the victim's death? Yes, it was that bottle. What was that about? She seemed to avert her eyes when she answered the quest judge's question. Very well, counsel, you may resume the cross-examination. And the inspector will kindly control his fervor. <clears throat> no idea what a poor man burned his wrist like that. If there's some other way a man's life can be taken without leaving a trace, please do show me. Man, I, it's the bottle. The bottle's got something to do with it. Um, examine. Ugh. 
Can't find anything out of place. Lies. The label is written in a foreign language that I don't recognize. Do you know what it says, Kazuma? I think it's French. This must be very expensive water. Yes, but what does it say? That's what I was asking. Then go to France and ask. You could just say that you don't know. There's gotta be something. It's not blinking, so no. Mm. Mm. Then how do we push him again? This just shows the cup, but we I don't see any different coloring or anything. What time is it? It's 10? I've been streaming for almost three hours, but I really want to finish this first case. Oh. I mean, I did save, so... Of course, this country is... You know what? Just, let's go for it. Let's just present this. Oops. Oh, the music stopped. I'm right. What is this? The bottle of water? Actually, there is one method of killing a man without leaving a trace that comes to mind. Obviously, I'm referring to poison. Poison? On the day of his death, we know that Dr. Wilson drank from this bottle of carbonated water. Could it be that there was poison inside? Could it be that the professor actually died after taking a sip from his glass? Order, order, order! And on that day, who was sitting at the same table as the professor and able to slip the poison into his drink? There's only one person who could possibly have done it. Giselle Brett, it was you. This is outrageous to suggest such a thing without a scrap of evidence. You little rookie imbecile, have you even considered the delicate situation our country finds itself in now? Have you forgotten that we only have just signed an accord of friendship with the British Empire? Have you even the vaguest inkling that your rash accusations could jeopardize the entire treaty? This is not a political arena. This is a trial to determine one's individual guilt with respect to one's crime. What? The fact that this woman is British makes no difference. We are here to determine the truth. Ahem. If I may. I will silence you forever for this disgraceful attempt. It is you who should be silent. Of, of course. Hey, lady! Where did that come from? She, she just snapped. I'm afraid I may have spoken unfairly before. I offer my most humble apologies. I'm sorry, my lady. To what are you referring? I described your police force as inferior. But no matter how inferior they may be, you still investigated this particular point thoroughly, I believe. The bottle, I mean, Inspector. And whether it contained poison or not. Of course. You... you did? Have you forgotten what my gri guiding principle is already? I strive for a flawless investigation every time. I don't believe it. Naturally, we tested the inside of the bottle and its contents. And? What did you find, Inspector? I ordered tests for every toxin that's available in this country at the present at that time. At present time. We can find no trace of poison of any description in a bottle of carbonated water, Your Excellency. What? Are you sure? The tests were meticulously carried by the chief coroner himself. No. No! It's in the cup. That's why she took it. I'm very grateful to you all, Japanese. You successfully established my complete innocence of this horrid affair. Thank you. But, but of course, dear lady, the pleasure was all ours. I was so sure. This, this can't be right. Everything falls into place if he was poisoned. 
Thank you, counsel. I think that cross-examination has been clarified everything. As the prosecution have asserted, a shot to the chest from this gun is the only conceivable cause of death. Furthermore, the accused, who by his own admission was holding this weapon, is the only possible culprit. I'm done for. The court wishes to apologize to the great inconvenience this has caused you, Miss Brett. Oh no, I'm just glad the matter is resolved. Before proceeding, I must ask counsel for the defense. Do you have any further new evidence to present the court at this point? Yes, the cup. Please, examine the cup. I'm gonna save just in case. I'm sorry, Rinosuke. I have nothing more. Well, if you'll excuse me now, I really must be leaving. Treating on court proceedings, Your Excellency. Susato Mikotoba, Judicial Assistant to Defense. Mikotoba? Mikotoba. In my darkest hour, with nowhere left to go, she appeared like a bolt of lightning. And in her hand, she carried a small package wrapped in a furoshiki cloth. Oh my gosh, to be continued. Okay, I really can't continue this longer. It's getting way too late. Ugh. That means I'll have to finish this case next time. Save my current progress, yes. Ugh. Oh, well, that's it for me tonight. So next time I stream, which I'll try to make it Thursday night. I think from now on I'll be sub um, streaming Tuesday, Thursday nights. Yeah, I think I can only do two nights at a time now. But yay, this is... Uh, great ace detective. I'm gonna be playing this until it finishes, and I probably, <sighs> yeah, because it's so like text heavy and long, I probably won't be able to play Dragon Quest or Persona Five Strikers in between it, especially if I'm only going to be if I'm only going to be streaming like two out of the two days out of the week now. So yeah, I'll just be focusing on this until I finish it. But yeah, next time we'll pick up with this, and hopefully we will finish this trial, and then yeah, start the second trial. But. My throat hurts. I need to go now. That's it for me tonight. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye.